pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you for joining us this evening. Praise the Lord. I have with me right now uh, Brother Ben and also Brother Cripps, but Brother Ben is going to be our silent partner tonight. Everybody, please keep him in your prayers. He's having a little trouble with his throat this evening, uh, so he's going to lay back and not say anything this evening and let his throat rest. We all been there and had a sore throat before, so we're going to remember him in our prayers this evening. Uh, also, Sister Angel should be joining us shortly. She was having connection issues, and uh, she should be joining us not too far along here if she can get those connection issues resolved. She said, believe it or not, wherever she is, it's storming. I kind of wish it was storming here because we were over here cooking like, you know, I don't know, chili on a hot stove. It's hot. <laughs> it's hotter than hot. It's triple degrees, and the sun has went down, and I'm just like, oh, enough already. But that's where we are. So before we go any further, I'm going to start with prayer. But, and I'm not going to forget to come back and thank everybody in the chat. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you on behalf of these, your people. Father, I ask that the forces of darkness, the principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places that have set themselves against your people be bound in Jesus' name. I ask, dear Lord, that all of our enemies be vanquished by the power of your Holy Spirit. I ask that you destroy any weapons that have been formed against us and that if our enemy come before us one way, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, they will flee before us seven ways. Lord, I pray confusion and confounding in the enemy's camp and that you will have them in derision. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will work against those that work against us. I thank you that you have declared in your word that no weapon formed against us will prosper. I ask you, Father, that if any believer be under attack in their physical body, that their attack be rendered null and void right now in Jesus' mighty name. For we know, Father, that our adversary, the devil, is a liar. We know that you have declared in your word that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. There is no sickness in his body, so there should be no sickness in our bodies. There is no fear in his body, so there should be no fear in our body. There is no depression in his body, so there should be no depression in our bodies. There is no pain in his body, so there should be no pain in our bodies. There is no lack in his body, so there should be no lack in our bodies. We live by the faith of the Son of God and stand on the promises declared in your holy word for us and ask all these things of you father in your mighty son king jesus's name father we know that there are those whose bodies are broken and infirmed but as jesus said to the disciples about the blind man who was blind from birth neither has this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of god should be made manifest in him that even those who now presently may be enduring these hardships, that ultimately it will be that your works might be made manifest in them also. We also know that you have been and are magnified and glorified by their faith in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that you recompense tribulation to those that trouble us. 
If any witch come against us, we ask that you break their witchcraft power in the mighty name of King Jesus and cause them to repent and believe in Jesus, lest they be destroyed by the very weapons they foolishly formed against us. Father, we ask for your peace and undisturbed composure in every situation and circumstance. We ask for your guidance and direction in all the affairs of our lives. We ask for your supernatural protection of all of our families, friends, loved ones, and co-workers in the mighty name of King Jesus. We ask that for those who do not know you, that they may come to know you in a new and living way through the saving power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask for favor and grace in all of our dealings and that your ministering spirits be sent forth to minister on our behalf as you have declared in your word because we are heirs to your salvation. Father, we thank you for all of these things now and forevermore in Jesus' mighty name and let all that agree with this prayer declare Amen. 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 Yeah. That's <laughs> praise a powerhouse God. prayer. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise the Lord. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Sister A, hey, no. You're so good at that, man. Oh, <laughs> sister. Now, I have to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I can't take none of that for me because I sat down last week prior to writing that prayer and I ended up making some a, a little addition because the Lord impressed upon me to add some things this week but I prayed and I said Lord please give me something to pray for your people and for people who come into the broadcast because you know this is not just about us coming together this is also a fellowship but we are believers and just like if it's just us if it was just me you Ben and brother Cripps and we sat down and we're having a cup of coffee and talking and one of us said, oh, my mother's under attack, God forbid, or my brother or whatever. We'd stop and pray and mm -hmm. we would declare the power of God against the enemy. So that's what we're supposed to do, sister. And I know, see, plus, I, I plus it's brother, also midnight here uh, into the broadcast. Ooh, and you talk about praying point. at midnight, too. Mm -hmm. Good point. Thank you for yeah, that. Just, <laughs> yes, ma'am. And also, I heard this brother say, that any church, any any congregation, whatever you want to call it, that does not operate in the resurrection power of Christ is fake and Babylonian. And it stuck with me. It stuck with me. I've been thinking about it. All religions come from Babylon. And I, I do this kind of prayer anyway. If it was just me, that's the way I'm praying. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to do that. Because uh, we need to put forth, you have supplication, which is where you're requesting from the Lord. And then there's supposed to be spiritual warfare prayers that you do against the enemy. And uh, one brother I was listening to, this is a different brother, he said that the evil ones that work for the devil, they rise up and they're doing their incanta incantations and spells and curses and hexes and vexes and astral projecting and doing all this evil usually between midnight and 3 a.m. And he talked about how while men slept, the scripture says, while men slept, this is when the enemy comes in. So we as believers, especially those who engage in spiritual warfare, prayer that are intercessors, should be rising up at midnight, 1, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, and coming against the enemy. And so ever since I heard that a few months ago, I have been doing it. I've always been praying, but specifically rising up in the middle of the night to engage in spiritual warfare prayer. I don't say that to condemn anybody. If mm. you're being pricked in your heart to say, well, I don't do that. Well, you can do that. It's up to you. You get before the Lord, seek the Lord on how you want to incorporate that into your life. Personally, anytime I wake up, if it's just rolling over, I look at the clock. Oh, look, it's 1230 in the morning. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pray. And then, or get up to go to use the restroom. Pray. It won't kill you to come back and pray for 15 or 20 minutes. Because these people, listen, they believe in the God they serve. And they doing the rituals for the God they serve. Now, we serve the living God. Shouldn't we be about our father's business? It's just, mm -hmm. look, it's just an admonishment. It is not to condemn. So don't anybody think if you don't do it, it's a condemnation. No, it just may be a calling. Don't look at it as a condemnation. Look at it as a calling. But anyway, I want to, before I go on, because I could talk forever, I want to <laughs> I want to say hello to everybody on the panel. 
Brother Cripps, how you doing this evening? Say hello to everybody. Hey, I'm fantastic. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here for another uh, awesome broadcast. And I know it's already going to be awesome because it is every time. So uh, I'm sorry that uh, Ben's not feeling well. So definitely praying for, for his throat. It'll be hard for him not to say anything with some of the topics we have. I know it would be chomped at the bit. Uh, but we hope his uh, throat gets healed in the name of Jesus. So uh, thanks for uh, at least um, uh, producing for us, Ben. Appreciate you uh, hanging out. It'd be easy. I, I know uh, I don't get sick very often, but when I do, depending on how sick I am, um, I like to, you know, cover up in the bed and, and throw some throw old movie on TV and just relax. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for being here with us. And um, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm glad Angel was able to get her yes. internet working and uh, she's here with us. So it's going to be a good broadcast and um, look forward to getting started. Listen, this broadcast is never the same without any one of the members of this. Um, I don't even want to really call you a panel because it's not. It's a, it's more of a fellowship and a get together among believers. I literally conceive uh, sort of in my mind's eye that we're all just sitting around a table chilling, having mm -hmm. our cup of coffee, but we're doing it with a few thousand miles or a few hundred yeah. miles between us. You know, yeah. um, Sister Angel. Thank you hey. so much, sister. I'm so glad you could join us this evening. Yeah, I, I call. I don't know if you saw. I was I was listening to when Jason was talking. I think it's right before you started the broadcast when I said uh, that I was going to have to restart my phone. But um, I don't know. We got finally got rain here uh, and a mm. storm. But that my internet has been um, just in and out all day, even before the storm hit. So I'm not sure if that's related or not. I also have a burning smell in my house. I can't get rid mm. of. I was going to talk to you guys about that. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I've heard it before that could be demonic. <laughs> I, mm. I don't know. That's unrelated. But I wanted to say though that um, you know, with the spiritual warfare prayers, you know, I find I have a hard time wording. Like even when I'm taught, like praying, um, you know, against the enemy to God, I feel dumb. <laughs> as I'm doing it, like, even if I'm like, like trying to rebuke something or, or if I think it might be like, like even telling God to, um, cast something out. Right. It's, I always feel like really lame. Like if they could, if, if the devil could hear me pray, <laughs> he would not be very intimidated because I feel stupid the way I am. So I need to, I need to listen to you a little bit more and see how, how you get that, uh, confidence. So I'm like, uh, it's, I always sound oh. like such a lame mouth. <laughs> I wouldn't ever do it out loud, but I feel lame just even for God to hear the You know what? The, That's the, just the devil trying to mess with your mind. <laughs> no, I it's not. It's, not just, <laughs> it's really, it's, it's it really is, lame. Sister, because you know why? It's not, it's not your power. It's Christ's right. power you stepping out in because I have no illusions that the devil could eviscerate me in two seconds flat, right. but it ain't yeah, I'm not in my own power. It's the power and authority right. of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he has assigned to all of us. So, yeah, you might feel a little silly the first couple of times, and it's just because you haven't done it, you know. Right. But the familiarity right. of doing it will breed confidence, but that confidence will also, it's going to be in Christ because that's who you're stepping out in. So you'll right. be all right. You, it's just It's just making the declarations. All you have to do is go in, especially in the new covenant, Look and see the things that the Lord has declared. Because, see, the things that I'm pronouncing are not my declarations. They're what he has declared in his word. And I'm getting in agreement with the promises in his word. And when we mix faith with what he has declared, that is powerful. Because the Lord, uh, his word doesn't return unto him void. It can return unto us void, but it can't return unto him void. So why we we have to get into agreement what he with what he has declared, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people have discovered that recently. Because see, I, you see people with all that naming and claiming stuff. Oh, I want this mansion. See, that's not what it was supposed to be about. That's not what it's about. It's about making the declarations for winning ground for the kingdom and taking authority over the enemy to see that the works of God are made manifest to bring people to understand that our God is God. There's a whole lot of folk that started out being witches and came into contact with a believer and that power got dealt with and it ended up chasing them right into the kingdom. So, uh, because why? Our God is God. See, that's, that's the difference. But before we go any further, I know you, you said you don't want to talk too much, Brother Ben, but I'd just like to give you an opportunity to say hello to everyone in the audience this evening. 
Yeah, hello everyone. It's good to be here. I'll be listening intently, but yeah, my mouth is just making it's difficult to talk right now. So uh, I got some. Uh, I'll save all my uh, stuff for next week. It'll be extra special. Awesome. It sounds like you've got a situation similar to when I was in second grade. I had, I guess they call it like foot and mouth disease, but all I had was like the canker sores in my mouth and uh, and basically like. 70, I think the doctor counted 70 canker sores in my mouth down my throat. And um, that was for like like a, a week straight. So I, I, I kind of relate to, to, to what you're going through. That was, it, was, it was really hard. It was probably like, the, that was the craziest thing, like illness that's ever happened to me. That, it's very rare too. It's like, like a livestock illness, I suppose. <laughs> but I don't think that's what happened to you. You just drank some of that hippie stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Which whenever I, I get a, whenever I get a sore throat, my grandmother, uh, from a long time ago, she told me, "Well, baby, go get you some aspirin, like about two aspirin, and put it in some warm water, and a little bit of of salt, and stir it up till it all dissolves, and then sip it and let you don't drink it. You let a little trickle down your throat. You gargle with it." And what it does is it pulls all of that inflammation and soreness out. Now it's not gonna make it completely wow. go away, but it will it'll bring it down to like maybe 70% of what it used to be. And you can feel a lot better. So you might want to try that then while you're being silent here, because I'm not really okay. gonna call on yeah. you to uh, do anything right now. So you're you're good if you want to step away and try that. But um yeah, she told me that, and I, I was like a little skeptical, you know, like, Grandma, come on, a little wives tale and stuff. And I tried it, and it actually did work. So, because uh, I hate, you know what I hate is when you get it, but me, I don't just get a sore throat. It will be total loss of voice, and I hate that feeling. Oh, really? Where you can't, yeah, you can't tell you, like, I hate it. I hate that. I don't like it at all. I don't get that from a sore throat, but I get that if, like, from the drop of a hat. Like, I get, I'll lose my voice really easily. But I've never gotten mm -hmm. from a sore throat. It's just like sometimes, like, if I don't get enough sleep or something, like, weird times, I'll get, I'll, I'll have that happen to me. But, um, but the aspirin thing, that's, that's, I'll need to try that. The other thing that's great for it is colloidal silver. If you have a sore throat and you gargle with yes. colloidal silver, um, that has worked almost immediately for me before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, ben I just found... burned himself. Who did? Ben, I think he burned himself. He burned himself oh. with an acidic drink. So I don't know if it was silver would work. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm, right. That's interesting. The I didn't realize might... that might have been it. I thought it was um just related to the co but the, the, if you burn yourself with a hot drink, what Sister Angel's talking about might actually be more suitable, which is the colloidal silver. Because no, I no, no, no. To... I think what well, yours would work better because for the silver, oh. it, to, theoretically, it's if it's fighting off some type of infection. But with Ben, he got like right. a, like I think an acidic burn in his mm -hmm. mouth. So I think the acidic. aspirin might because oh. it's just like a, the inflammation, right? So that's that's might be what he should do is do what you said about the uh, aspirin. Okay, um, see, I thought you were talking about a heat burn, like he drank something that was too hot or something. Oh, no, I thought he told you guys. No, it's like he said he drank like an acidic acidic be a beverage. So it was like way too acidic. And mm. uh, and it was kombucha, and, and I don't trust kombucha. Ooh. No, thank you. California. <laughs> so, Chris, you don't like kombucha? I do not. No, I do not. Not, I, not even a I little bit. I don't think I've tried it. I've heard of it. Nope. I've tried a couple of other things that were a little strange and out there, but not that. So, uh, is that that's not anything soy based, right? Yeah, I think it's like just like a carbonate. It it tastes Ferminate, carbonated. Ferminate. Yeah, but it's yeah, like fermented. Have, but I think it's like from bacteria carbonates it or something. Yeah. Like, oh no, not bacteria. Oh, Probably something yes. else. <laughs> that's right. I've right. heard a little bit about that, and a lot of people won't try it because of the. Bacteria and the fermentation stuff. So, yeah, it sits for a while. And no. you know, here's what it says: kombucha. Yeah, it's like a yogurt. Is fermented, slightly alcoholic, lightly effervescent, sweetened by black or green tea. It's commonly consumed for its supposed health benefits. Sometimes the beverage is called kombucha tea to distinguish it from cult the culture of bacteria and yeast. So I don't know how what Ben ended up swigging on, but 
This is uh, very fancy. <laughs> hard pass. Uh, what did you say, brother? Hard pass. Hard pass. Yeah. <laughs> it says kim kombucha is thought to have originated in Manchuria. Uh oh. <laughs> Never mind. Oh. I <laughs> Manchuria, yes. China, where, where the drink is traditionally consumed, or in Russia and Eastern Europe. Kombucha is now homebrewed globally and also bottled and sold commercially by various companies. It is produced by fermenting sugared tea using a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, commonly called a mother or mushroom. The microbial populations in a SCOBY vary. The yeast mm -hmm. component generally includes Saccharomyces, I'm sure I butchered it, and Cervasii, C-E-R-C-V-I-S-I-A-E, along with other species. The bacterial component almost always includes gluco, yeah, okay, whatever, Bac bacter, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a type of bacteria, and then it says to oxidize yeast produced by alcohol to acetic acid. So, sister, I think you're right. He did probably burn himself with that drink. Too much Ooh, acetic terrible. acid. I, I, I yes. should like it if it's tea related, but I mm. feel like I had it from like Kroger once and like a, it was like, you know, a Kroger kombucha that probably wasn't like the real strong hippie stuff, but uh, I didn't like it very much. But um, yeah, it must have been like, it's more the, chi the you know, like the Chinese are meddling <laughs> with their podcast. Obviously, this is Chinese. I'm not laughing at you, sister. I'm not laughing at you, brother. Ben dropped a comment. He said, oh. uh, kombucha <laughs> is supposed to be uh, rich in probiotics. And he said, you know me, I'm living the lifestyle of the rich and famous. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Or the rich uh, and Chinese. Or the, I think the, you know the, who to blame for this disaster. Or the rich and burned sure. and famous now. So. <laughs> But well, we're still praying for him, and we trust God for a speedy recovery on behalf of Brother Ben. Before we go uh, too much further, I just want to stop and say hi to everyone in the chat. Thank you for joining us this evening. You have Bible Literalist, Child Young Cat. Let's see who else is out here. Oh, Young. Okay, I hope I'm going to butcher your name. <laughs> young KG, thank you very much for joining us. Anna Fox, thank you. Sister Celine. Um, let me see. It's always the same people. Thank you so very much for coming out. I appreciate you so much. Thank Twin guys. Talk, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, if I miss anybody, I'll try to get you as the broadcast continues along. I'll do another shout out. Hendrix, I see you out there. Switch, I know you're out there. Um, Switch, keep Hendrix in line. He usually, you know, you got to watch him. Uh, mm -hmm. Nata Lorarius. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna just I'm gonna say O U D C because I I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I don't know if that's French or what it is. I want to butcher it. Yeah, O U D C. And then uh, G D or G. Y'all with these names now. Come on, G J G T fifty six M G. Thank you guys so much for coming out, Larry Stubbs. Same thing to you. Now. We are going to start the broadcast this evening. Sister Angel, I want to ask you, because I didn't get a chance to talk to you. Did you yes. have a topic for the second half of the broadcast that you'd like to yes, discuss? Yes, I would, I would like to talk a little bit about um, serial killers and the uh, program. So, um, but I need, I'm getting some um, links together for Ben, because I, I always forget that I can do that. So I'm trying to find some um, like uh, right. photos and things like that. He can put on the screen for me to talk about. Okay. Sister Angel wants to talk about serial killers, guys. Now, this mm -hmm. ought to be interesting because this was a surprise to me. I had no <laughs> idea Sister, Errol, the truth Sister Angel would want to talk about something so cryptic and strange and demonic. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, okay. It's, that's it's, well, it's, it's basically kind of about what the psyop <laughs> around serial killers. So uh, it's not it's oh. not yeah. Oh, good yeah, for you because yeah. I saw through some of that crap a while back. So good for you. I'm not going to steal your thunder on it, but I have something to say about it. So cool. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, it's pretty cool if you haven't heard of it. Awesome. Look forward to the topic. We're going to kick it off, though, Sister Angel. Did you bring your either helpful or helpful tip for this evening? Um, well, okay, now hopefully it's, it's helpful um, because mm -hmm. it, uh, depending on how, how avid people are in terms of houseplants and gardening, but um, to me it was revolutionary when I found out uh, so if you have like, like, like I have a ton of houseplants and I have uh, lots of large floor plants, 
like, um, you know, that uh, uh, would ideally like to go outside for the summer. Usually a lot of, a lot of house plants um, like to stay outside in the summer, but you have to keep them watered. And then they're in those pots outside. They get super dry really fast. And it's almost not even worth taking them out there. Cause I, if you forget like two days, you know, like, like they, they just, you know, wilt and it's, it's, you know, that foliage you, you cultivate all year. You want it, you know, you don't want it to like all go away and, and not have, you know, your big, uh, uh, green tree or whatever that you, you know, bring in for the winter to cheer you up. So um, mm -hmm. I found out recently, like, especially, see, the thing that's nice about bringing plants outside is they grow faster. So if you grow, mm -hmm. if you take them outside in the summer, that that's a really great way to make them grow a lot faster than they normally would as a house plant. Um, and, uh, like, you know, want, want the, the foliage to fill up more space. So um, it's kind of a nice little uh, trick, but, you know, again, it's a pain to have them outside and, I have to remember to water them constantly. So, uh, but it also, if you plant them in the ground, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can really damage the roots, digging them back up, which, uh, right. uh, and I, I've been trying for a long time to figure out, like, what do you do? Like, you could put, put a, dig a hole and put a pot in there, but um, that's, that's really no good because then they're just in a pot and they're also like their, their roots are compressed in the pot and, there's not a lot of breathing, you know, like, like, uh, like air transfer going on if the, the plants are in a buried plastic pot. Plus, it'll leave a giant, you know, giant hole in the ground because, like, if you put it in a bigger pot than the root ball needs just to give it some room, you know, you're going to have to have this huge, you know, uh, uh, hole in your ground once you take it out in the, in the fall. So um, uh, I found out that what you could do is you dig, like, a shallow, like, bowl-shaped hole in the ground. Like this works really mm. great for like palm trees and stuff. I love okay. palm trees. I, I collect them. Uh, and obviously, you know, in California, you don't need to, to, to have, have palm <laughs> trees as house plants. But for me, I miss the keys and it's key West, So I fill my house with house plants and uh, palm trees, especially I have all different kinds. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, but it goes for any plant. Um, uh, you dig like a, a shallow bowl shaped hole in the ground. So instead of digging like, like, like as deep as you would for like to, to totally bury the root ball, you dig mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe the deepest point of the shallow wide hole, you know, is about as deep as the root ball needs, but, it, but it's, it's a lot more gradual and shallow, um, at like, like a, like a real shallow bowl. Right. And then what you do is you lay down a piece of fabric, um, underneath, like to, to cover the hole, like, like, you know, like, okay. the, like with enough to, well, you want enough room on the side to where the roots won't be able to get around the fabric. Um, then you put the plant in that shallow bowl with this, you know, covered in fabric and you, and then you put the dirt up around, you mound it on top of the plant's root ball. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of um, having to dig the plant up, essentially what you're doing is you're mounding a t like a bunch of dirt up around the, the root ball to make sure it's good and covered, you know, it's not going to dry mm -hmm. out. And also you want to put lots, lots of mulch. I would put extra mulch, but more mulch than I normally would if I'm doing this because mm -hmm. you're kind of planting it a little bit. Um, you know, it's not down in the ground. It's, it's going to, it's going to be more prone to drying out if you don't mulch it really, really well, because it's, it's in a shallow um, uh, hole instead of, a, you know, like the normal hole you might dig to plant something. So um, right. this way, when you go to, when you want to bring it in for the winter, um, all you have to do is find the edges of that fabric and li and and lift it up out of the hole. So it's kind of like um, instead of having to you know uh, dig the plant up, the roots won't get through the fabric. You know, obviously you want to select like some pretty you know okay. uh, thick fabric, um, but mm -hmm. um, they won't get through the fabric. And it's kind of like you know picking up a picnic. You know, like if let's say you had like a you know a picnic or something like that, just picking up the blanket and and you know folding it up and it with everything like all of your plates and everything on on it rather than um because like you know if you were to if you were to have to dig it up and um and cut the root cut through the roots and you're really kind of uh, setting yourself back uh, with the growth and everything and you can also. Mm -hmm. Uh, kill a plant that way because it's going to be in kind of shock after it's have its roots damaged and you're bringing it back inside so this is like the most gentle way to do it where you basically just you know lift lift the fabric up and then of course you you know you repot it you don't put, keep the fabric mm -hmm. on it that you know throw that away but i saw um in kentucky uh this is like the promised land for a plant nerd it's called uh, brian's botanicals this guy brian he's awesome he has this incredible uh 
place. Um, uh, it's like a nursery, but it's more like a jungle. <laughs> I can, there, it's countless plants there. Um, and it's all his home business. And it's very uh, rustic um, and extensive and very well priced, by the way. Um, he uh, he has palm trees that are, you know, not zoned for, for here at all. Like, you know, Kentucky and Indiana, they're totally tropical. And he has them, grow, you know, 25, 30 feet tall out in front of his building. And I was like, how are you doing this? What I don't understand because I know they couldn't leave them out over the winter. And then he told me the secret. And actually he's able to grow all of his, like he, he's able to sell um, full grown trees. To, right. to buyers rather than like you know uh like normally you're gonna have to buy like a, a small tree, you know a small tree that's usually in a, in a in a pot already but he plants his trees in the ground like this with this method that i'm telling you and he can grow them to where they're really nice specimens like you know something that would take a, a you years to grow in your yard um mm -hmm. and sell them for hundreds of dollars that way because he can just lift them out no root damage and sell them to the customer so this is a really great thing if you're if if you're a gardener, if you want to figure out what it is. Now, he, he has a lot of room. He has like a warehouse that he can put his gigantic trees in. So it's not going to work for most of us uh, to, to let our, our indoor, indoor trees, you know, summer so much that they uh, that they grow that tall and they don't let it fit in our house. But it is a good way to get, um, you know, get, get you off the ground uh, if you're, you know, if you're trying to, to get a, a mature collection. And, and plus right. it will keep a lot of plants they need to go outside some, some really won't mm -hmm. won't live very long if you don't let them go outside in the summer so yeah hopefully that makes sense hopefully i explained it the right way but um it, it, if you do love gardening it and you haven't uh, uh ever heard of this um I, I promise you it's 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 like a really great hack i yeah, have see, palm what? trees out in my yard right now <laughs> and nobody does that here you don't ever plant palm trees in your yard in indiana so you're know, like how are you mm -hmm. doing that you know because otherwise unless you just don't let them die right? but it's, it's well there. so yeah see i i don't have a green thumb it's probably as brown as it gets because every plant i've ever tried to have probably with the exception of an aloe vera plant and and that one i think only made it because it was outside uh, oh man, any I plant, kill those all the time. Yeah, I can't do it with any <laughs> plant inside the house. They don't, they don't work for me. They, I end up killing them. Uh, and it's not yeah, the neglect. I water them. them first. Yeah. Well, I, you, I yeah, there's I'm a whole about. lot of factors in triangulation. <laughs> it's hard. Right. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll give you some. It's the lighting. Usually, it's like the lighting. I mean, but I say have it's them the on a window sill. I well, okay, now if you have them on a windowsill, and so and and then the proper amount of sunlight and everything, so then you're probably if it's not the sunlight. See, for me, it was the sunlight that I, I kept okay. getting wrong was the um the like uh, like not being able to interpret what high light is versus low light, like or right. you know medium light, like they say on the tags. So it's very like it, it it's very complicated, um, and you really have to. It's a lot more in depth than the little cards on the on the plants make it seem it's, it's very very hard and most of the time they're wrong most of the time they're totally wrong when they when they tell you what what the plant needs like on the little mm -hmm. tag or whatever it's, it's not even accurate um but other than that it's usually over watering um for people mm -hmm. like because like uh that was how i killed my 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 first plants uh was not enough light and over watering because i, I now I, I let them like almost all of them dry out uh, uh, almost completely. Like, like it'll be like one, like once every ten days. Now, right now, it's too hot. Like they're they're going through water a little faster than that. But I, typically, I, I try to let them all dry out as as much as I can because that way I know. But you can get a water meter. They're like very cheap. These little water meters. Well, that's are what like I had. Bucks. You did. Well, I, yeah, you know the things where you stick it. It's like a spike in it, and it, you can yes. have a little water bottle. And so then it's only watering the plant. As needed oh, kind no, no, of thing? no. The water meter actually, you stick it in the soil and it tells you if the soil is dry, uh, moist, oh, yeah. or I, wet. I'm sorry, I got that. I understood that. But what I'm saying is, okay. like, I Those didn't little, like, yeah, I, I got the little short bottle. They were like, like maybe four ounces of water and it has right. a little spike that you can stick down in there. And it's supposed to now that the Soil is like it's supposed to be like some kind of natural thing where you won't be overwatering the plant, and right, like the plant is extracts the water from the soil, and then the water will go continue to come back down in as needed. But it ain't work. I tried it. I tried it every which way. I tried just watering it so many times, like it says. Without that, then I tried that. 
I tried different plant foods. I can't do it. I, every time what I happened to the plant? Plants. Like, did it just wilt and turn brown and die? Like, yeah, yes, that's what happened. Right. It, yeah, they just it, wither it, and wilt and die. Quickly? <laughs> I even tried talking to them and telling them I love them, and it didn't work. <laughs> and the other thing is, is, is pests. Like, a lot of times when you're a new plant owner, you don't realize like mm. how prevalent spider mites and mealybugs are and also how invisible they are. Like in, in, like you won't notice them right away, uh, especially mm. spider mites. You might never notice them until it's too late. Um, and like if you don't, because, you know, like I know for me, I didn't think to have to deal that I was going to have to deal with it, like any pest treatment. You know, for like the whole first two years, I don't think I dealt with it until like my cactus garden that I built all by myself and like made even made the concrete planter myself got totally nailed by mealybugs. I had to throw it all away because I couldn't save it. Um, that was my the, and I didn't even know that they were there and they were like covering the cacti with like these fuzzy masses and I thought that's just oh, cat wow. hair getting stuck to the yeah. So it, oh, um, the the pest thing is another thing, but you know I'll um. I'll, I'll talk to you back because I, I, I'll, I'll have to, uh, like to send you a plant or something that would be like a starter <laughs> plant that would be foolproof and I can tell you exactly how to take care of it because it's Don't really great it. for you to be able to put passes indoors. Oh, they're Don't so good it, for sister. you though. They're really I, I good can't. for you. <laughs> I'm sure. I no, misery loves company. I'm addicted. I want you Implanticide to be or something, whatever the word is for killing plants. <laughs> Brother Cripps, what what do you? How about you? How are you with plants? Are you are you, are you able to keep them alive or are you a murderer too? <laughs> um, uh, I've, I've had a few plants that I've kept alive. I'm not a huge plant fan, uh, necessarily, mm -hmm. but I worked on a, a golf course in Florida back in the early nineties. And so I learned, um, how to pull weeds and how to differentiate between a weed and a, and a, a legitimate plant and, um, ground cover and mowing and trimming and, uh, also planting flowers, um, mm. all over the golf course. So. Um, I learned quite a bit and then, uh, I helped my mom, uh, for years. I did all her trimming because every, I learned everything on the golf course. So, um, I do enjoy yard work. I just don't spend a whole lot of time with the actual, I might plant a couple things, you know, plant a bush here and there. Um, what I don't want, my mom was crazy about this. She, she planted things everywhere and it was a jungle to me. Uh, I'm, I'm more um, manicured. You know, I, I, a little goes a long way as far as I'm concerned, as far as things being planted. Um, I probably don't mind it, but uh, it, it's not my favorite thing. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, I kind of went overboard with landscaping our house, like overplanted things. Um, and now I look at these minimalistic, uh, you know, yards that are online that are like, yeah. really uh, uh like now i don't mean like the houses that is just like a brick house and then there's like some like a couple plain shrubs and that's it like that drives me crazy i'm like you have a whole yard how can you just have grass in your yard what are you doing it's just grass man but um yeah. uh, I, I i i i if you if you're deliberate with how you plant yeah. your yard it, it does end up looking a lot better my i, I have uh wasted a lot of money here by I went out and went crazy like the first couple of years we lived here getting all this crap that didn't didn't go together. It was mostly just flowers that I liked and they don't look nice after the flowers go away. So, it was, so I rip it all up and I ha waste all the mulch because once you dig all your beds up and, and you know, all the, the mulch gets mixed in with the dirt. So I had like I redid everything like three times. But but um, I didn't like plants either, uh, Jason, until I moved up north. <laughs> when I now living up north where we have winter because, you know, in Florida, uh, uh, as I'm sure you all know, it's it's beautiful all year round. But living here um, and having winter, where you know a great deal of things die, and my beautiful yard goes away, um, suddenly I, I began to appreciate uh, nature a lot more, especially like plants and trees and stuff like that. And um, I I got real depressed seasonally. I get real depressed in the winters, and having the plant like collecting house plants. Um, has cured it and i don't know if it's the oxygen i ha i suspect it has something to do with the fresh air uh, or something like have like something about being near like nature and, and plants like i feel my, my my living room has like uh, several like six foot tall trees in it um but uh, but it really helps me a lot but i didn't appreciate any of that stuff until i until i moved away from florida 
Um, and you live in a temperate enough climate that it, you know, uh, I don't think you get really, really bad winters where you are. Um, and I know Lisa doesn't, but once you live up here, I mean, I, I, I it, it, or anywhere like like this where it gets real bleak in the winter suddenly like I, I took for granted florida my whole life i didn't even care about any of that stuff and now i'm like i lived in like a tropical houseplant nursery like that was my entire life like orchids just grow wild there <laughs> and the keys especially so oh but yeah i i just think it's good for people's health though it's like i even if people don't like cancer i like to recommend like a few house plants because i think it I think it's really good to uh, something about the air quality. I really, I really, I don't even. And they try to say, oh, well, we haven't really proven that. Uh, some people, you know, some scientists say yes. Others say, oh, well, it takes a whole lot of plants. But I think there's something that they're. I think there's something unquantifiable about it. Uh, that that you know that they can't really measure. I think that um, has an effect. But um, can you guys hear me? I dropped my earbud. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, all right, and uh, Jason, I think it'll be your turn for a helpful hint, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, my health, helpful health hint. Um, I uh, have been uh, working on my um, uh, losing weight, not just losing weight, but eating better. Uh, in my in my twenties, my uh, my parents got divorced and my mom had, had been the one that had cooked my whole life. And I didn't learn how to do anything except for cook steaks on a grill. So, uh, when they got divorced and I kind of went on my own, uh, I, uh, ate a lot of fast food and I, uh, uh, drank some back then. So, I was, you know, beer and, and pizza and, uh, essentially ate fast food and I gained a lot of weight. Uh, and then as I got older, I wanted to, to get in shape and I tried several times, you know, working out and, and eating right. And I did, I did well with the eating right. Uh, but what always ended up happening, I would, I would, uh, start making some progress and then I would, uh, sabotage myself and, and give up. And, um, uh, I, I don't know if anyone listening ever str struggles with this, like trying to lose weight. It doesn't seem like it's working. And, uh, Jen and I have talked recently about this and I even thought maybe uh, when I'm done, when I get to my ideal weight, I, I'm very interested in uh, being a trainer, not necessarily just, you know, teaching people how to use weights and stuff, but also helping them uh, deal. I, I believe that for some people, not everyone, but for some people, uh, losing weight can have an emotional component attached to it. Um, I, I've experienced this where I would do the same things, do the same workouts and, and eating right, and I would have some progress, uh, but it was limited as to how far I could go. Uh, but then when I started dealing with some of the emotional components, I realized that I was uh, believing uh, lies that other people told me about, about my weight. And, you know, uh, being made fun of, you know, when I was younger and, and people make ridiculous comments. One of the things I react to, you know, I'm a, I'm a bigger, bigger fella anyway, but people call you hoss and, and a uh, big guy and things like that. And it really, really bothered me. Um, and, and I would stand up after a while of, of having this, as people don't call, call me by my name. they have all these, uh, uh, references to weight and size. And I would say, why you always got to reference my size? You can call me by my name or something else, but you're a uh, hoss or, or big guy. I just never liked it. And, and, you know, we get different reactions to that, but I realized, uh, in, in that whole process that I was reacting to it emotionally. Uh, and so my, my tip really is if, if anyone's struggling with that, um, definitely look into what you believe about yourself as it pertains to uh, the weight that you're carrying around. Um, uh, for me, once I realized that uh, I'd been believing this lie that my mother had told me and what she told me when I was 17, when I started and I didn't even gain very much. I gained a little bit of weight and she was upset with me because uh, some of my clothes didn't fit anymore and, and uh, she was going on a rant. I realized uh, that her mom was even worse with her. You know, a lot of times either a parent does uh, kind of the same things their parents did or they try to do better. My mom was somewhere in between. She did better than her mom did with, with her. 
uh, but uh, she uh, had a lot of shame, uh, dealt, uh, dealt with me using shame uh, a lot of times. Uh, and uh, that really doesn't work on me. In fact, to this day, when someone uh, uses shame to try to control me or, or make some shaming comment, I, I uh, still react to that. But anyway, she told me when I had gained a little bit of weight, she said, well, you're probably always going to have to struggle with weight. That's exactly what she said to me. And I accepted it. I said, well, you know, if I'm always going to have to struggle with my weight, that, uh, then that's that's true for me. And it's not true. Anybody, um, you know, unless you have some kind of hormonal problem, there's a small percentage of people out there that struggle with that. And they can't lose weight because of that reason. But uh, most people, if they uh, want to change their, their uh, health habits and stuff, they can do it, you know, find the right diet, diet for you. And I don't even like to call it a diet or call it more of a health plan um, and change the way you eat and change the way you move. Um, and, and I'm not criticizing anyone, you know, or calling people couch potatoes. I mean, people use negative um, connotations a lot of times thinking it's going to motivate people. And that never worked for me. Uh, what worked for me was working on emotional issues and believing the lie that I that I was told. And when I had dealt with that stuff, I would do the same things that I did before working out and eating right and being more active. And uh, the weight just um, started to fly off. Um, at one point, I, the heaviest I ever weighed uh, was 397. And, I, and that, this was back in 2000, 2009. Yeah, 2009. And uh, I just hadn't been weighing myself, and I had no idea that I weighed that much. And I went to the doctor for a sinus issue. And of course, they make you jump on the scales, which I did. And I saw that I was almost close to 400 pounds. Now, like I said, I'm a big guy. I carry it. Uh, my weight's well distributed. A lot of times I'd tell someone what I weigh, and they're like, well, you don't look like you weigh that much. Um, but to me, that was too much. So uh, even back then, before I'd started dealing with emotional things, I did I did get down a little bit, uh, uh, hovered around like 350, somewhere in there, which is a lot better than 400, um, but it's still not where I wanted to be. And then um, I got divorced uh, from my first wife. Um, she left back in, uh, my divorce was final in 2012, but she left in 2011, and after that, I'd started to deal with some of the stuff and also some spiritual changes in my life. And um, I, I got down to, from, got down from about, I gained a little bit, I got down from 270 to like two, uh, I'm sorry, 370 to 340. And then my mom died uh, in 2017. And here's the interesting thing. When she died, that lie that she told me died with her and many other things that she she told me, and don't get me wrong, I love my mother, and she helped a lot of people. She was a counselor, and later in her life, she, when she became a counselor, um, she went back and she tried to mend our relationship and, and work on many of the things that were issues uh, for me growing up, and she even took responsibility for some of it. And um, so our relationship, uh, especially the last seven, eight years of her life uh, was was very different than it was originally, and we worked together on that. And as a result of that, um, uh, working on things. But what I noticed when she died was that a lot of the stuff that I grew up with it just disappeared, and I believe it was God uh, taking those things from me. That the burden of her uh, comments and things like that, the the shaming things, uh, all the stuff that she did. Uh, it almost, it feels like it was overnight. I don't, I, I, I don't think that most change is overnight necessarily. I mean, I, it can be for some people like they say, oh, I got saved and everything just changed overnight and I didn't do this and didn't do that. And that's great. If that happens for you, that's wonderful. Uh, for me, what it was, uh, I believe is that all the seeds that I had planted, I took nutrition classes and, and did all this stuff and working on emotional issues and spiritual issues. Uh, what happened was a lot of the seeds that were planted got allowed to grow uh, uh, pretty much at the same time. Uh, and so that after that, I lost another 80, uh, like 86 pounds. Um, and I'm still working on, I still have, uh, I don't know, I'd probably, I'd probably like to lose about 60 more pounds to get down to a weight that I would feel comfortable living the rest of my life with. 
So I've been working out and eating right. Uh, Jen and I both, uh, you know, go to the gym three or four times a week, and um, uh, it's it's just really, really been working out. And and she and I have the same uh, similar thing that happened to her when she was in her marriage, uh, dealing with the narcissist. Uh, it was difficult for her. She was able to uh, to change her eating, and she had a trainer for a while and stuff. I'll let her tell her story, but I'm just um, relating to the idea that she noticed the same thing and we've had these discussions about it that now because uh things uh, spiritually and emotionally and physically are much better for her mm-hmm. it's she seems to be reacting her body seems to be letting go of the weight where before it seemed to hold on to it now i don't know that anyone's done a study on this you know any doctor mm-hmm. has done a study on this to, to to prove the connection between emotions and spirituality to to a person holding on to the weight that they carry. But they have done studies on physical things that happen as a result of undealt with emotions and feelings. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like that falls in the same category. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that it's true for me. So I, I, I've been going on, uh, on and on about this. But so my, my tip is look into if you're trying to lose weight and it's not working out for you, but you're doing everything that you uh, feel uh, like is right for you, uh, check, check with God and uh, talk to him about if there's anything that you're holding on to, any lie that you're holding mm-hmm. on to from the past and ask the Holy Spirit uh, to help you work on that. A lot of times the Holy Spirit works with us. It's kind of like, do you ever get a splinter in your finger pretty deep? Mm-hmm. Like a, oh, a yeah. little, little piece of wood? Well, oh yeah. anybody who's had that knows that there are some that you can dig in a little bit and, and pull it out, right? There's others right. that are too deep. You can't get a hold of it. So mm-hmm. what God made our bodies amazing. So what happens with that splinter that's too too far beneath the surface is if you leave it alone over time, your, your body will push that splinter up to the top. Your skin will push it up to the top right. where you can pull it out and grab it. And I believe that God works that way too with emotions and feelings. If you're having something that is very deep, and he wants it to come out and you're you're wanting to work with him on it. it'll it'll happen a little bit over time and then that emotion that feeling whatever it is mm-hmm. will come up and then you can deal with it and god will help you deal with it and then once he deals with something it's over if you're doing stuff in your own power trying to deal with things on your own um i i, I believe psychotherapy works like this too Sec- secular psychotherapy and psychology i'm not saying that's not beneficial to anyone but what I've noticed is a lot of times you have to stay in therapy for years and years and years and years dealing with the same issue that God can get rid of in a very short time if you give it over to him. Uh, mm-hmm. And I believe that's true about any kind of mental condition. And people have a chemical. This is a different subject. but People have a chemical imbalance. Uh, some people don't even believe in that. People have chemical imbalances. I, I do believe that there are some people that have some kind of physiological uh, issue that's hard to deal with. But what I do know is that even in that scenario, uh, if your spiritual life is where it needs to be, uh, if you work with the Holy Spirit on that, it can help anybody with anything that they face. That, that's, my, uh, that's my belief. And it's certainly true for me with uh, overall health. So I, I, I'm, I'm 51 uh, this year, just turned 51. And I feel healthier uh, than I felt since my early twenties. Uh, and I, and I'm not the same weight I was in my twenties, but I feel better now than I did back then. Uh, awesome. and, I, and I believe it's, it's spiritual, emotional, physical, all those things wrapped up into one. I'm just, uh, in a different place now than I ever have been in my life. And I have God to thank for all that with helping me work through all this and, uh, bring me to point of, of uh, my walk with him where I, 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 I feel content. We're always growing and changing as believers. We should always be growing and changing, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but um, for the first time in a long time, in many ways, different areas of my life, I am more content than I've ever been. And I praise God for that. So I hope that helps somebody. I don't know if it did. Um, I have to listen to the playback, see if I made any sense. But... <laughs> Well, I can tell you right now, Brother Cripps, you made absolutely no sense. Okay. No, wonder, wonderfully, that was beautiful, Brother Cripps, because um, first of all, congratulations on your weight loss. I, 
I had my mute on, so when you were talking, I had meant to interrupt you a couple of times. <laughs> I didn't realize, oh. oh, they can't hear me because I have my mute on. But I wanted right. to say that because I wanted to give you some feedback on what you were saying. So apologies, apologies for that if you thought we weren't interested or listening because I absolutely was. Anybody that okay. sure. can accomplish because weight loss is very difficult, particularly when you're dealing with metabolic imbalances. Right. Stress is also a factor, like you were saying. Um, trauma uh, has a, a lot to do with it. So uh, there are a lot of factors that can play into weight loss, environmental uh, toxicity, uh, which is a large part of it as well, detoxing. So uh, there, there's, a, there's a whole myriad of, of things that may come into play when it comes to dealing with someone who's overweight or morbidly obese. So uh, for you to accomplish that, first of all, is, you know, in, in my book, nothing short of a miracle, a small miracle to lose, what, the equivalent of a petite person? <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, so thanks. congratulations. Praise the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. I know that it may not have been easy for you or, you know, it, it was probably easier than all of your other attempts, but it was, I'm sure it still had a level of difficulty with sure. it. Sure. You know, it wasn't a walk in the park is what I'm saying, well, uh, but you, you were able to, to do it. And uh, I think that's awesome. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Did anybody else have anything else to add about what Brother Cripps said before we move on? Oh, sorry. I was having a hard time getting them mute, but now I'm still looking for some of those photos. Uh, for Ben, yeah, I, I uh, just want to uh, back him up on uh, what he's saying a little bit. Um, I, uh, I, was, I never really had a, a major weight problem, but I did notice that uh, I, I was always carrying around like, like 20 extra pounds from the time I was up, I don't know, about 15 till, um, till I was about 20 28 um mm -hmm. i did lose uh like 15 pounds when uh i went on some extreme diet where i i restricted my calories till to like 800 a day um wow. uh which was uh hard it was like i just ate salmon and spinach and uh and a steel cut oatmeal and that was not uh something that was sustainable um but um i did find strangely once i um once I got pregnant and had my first child, it reversed mm -hmm. my metabolism. Somehow it actually made it to where I, uh, I, I, I was, I lost weight during pregnancy. I was 30 pounds lighter than, uh, mm -hmm. when, which was not healthy, but the baby was fine. My daughter was fine, but, um, uh, it did something very strange to my metabolism. Uh, since, uh, I started having children, I have never, uh, gained weight during pregnancy aside from the pregnancy itself. But I have noticed too, though, that um, basically what was keeping what was keeping me having extra weight, uh, in, you know, when I was younger, was mm -hmm. like like Crip said, not having. Well, for me, it was like a not having it, any higher priorities, or, you know, any maturity, not having things that I um, uh, like. It, there, it was a, I was very self indulgent. I didn't really eat that much. But I didn't mm -hmm. pay attention to what I was eating and I didn't pay attention to like what activity I was actually doing or any activity, like if I was doing any activity whatsoever. Um, and it, mm -hmm. it does seem like a lot of times, not always, uh, certainly not always, but a lot of times having extra weight is sort of the byproduct of just having an unhealthy life overall yeah. and maybe mm -hmm. a life where you're not actually doing like you're not um, fulfilled and you're not um, uh, you're kind of aimless or um like lost uh, and, and it seems like for a lot of people I know once they come into their own and they actually kind of know who they are a little bit and they maybe they have children or 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 just um you know that they're married so something where they you know that they find find the Lord they they have a purpose in life it, it seems like so not obviously not always it, it does depend but um it becomes easier to keep weight off or to keep a healthy weight or because it, I, I do believe that um, when we are unhealthy inside, it just manifests, um, yeah. on the outside. Right. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with that. I also have heard that a lot of, um, uh, weight gain that's very stubborn and hard to remove mm. is, um, actually fat is a way to, uh, for your body to store toxins away from uh, your vital organs to vital where organs, they can't do damage. Right. right. And so distilled water, which is another thing that I introduced into my life, um, uh, you know, around the, well, by the time I started having my second child, um, my, my best friend who'd known me my entire life saw me, 
um, uh, after, you know, it had been a couple of years and, um, she said, I'd never looked as good as I had, I looked and, um, she really thought it was the water, uh, <laughs> for some reason, that was like the only thing I had changed at that point. My skin was different. Um, and I was, you know, I, I had, I, I was thinner than she'd ever seen me as a, as an adult. And, um, I read that when your body can't get rid of the toxins that, you know, you know, from a bad diet and also just. Um, if you're not drinking uh, good water that actually functions as a solvent the way it's supposed to, uh, supposed mm -hmm. to where it actually flushes toxins right. from the body, that has to do something. So it stores it um, in um, with, with fatty tissue. That, I've heard that before. I, I, mm -hmm. It made sense to me. So, wow. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Sister Angel. Yes, those are some good insights as well. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that water is a solvent. <laughs> uh, I was reading and learning about that. There's a, a wonderful lecture. It's a little, I don't think it's boring because I love the information that's in it. It's by Dr. Batman Gellich. There's a name for you. Most yeah. people just call him Dr. Batman. He's passed away in recent years, but... Uh, they still have his videos up. He's written some wonderful books. I think one of them, if I remember correctly, I don't want to give the wrong credit to the wrong, um, wrong person because I've written several, I mean, read several books written about water. Uh, one of them is Your Body's Many Cries for Water. Let me see if I can find that one real quick. But uh, there's a lecture by him called You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty, Don't Treat. Don't treat thirst with medication. I believe that's what it calls. It's called. Uh, you've got to check it out. For those of you who like a little bit technical information, um, but want to get the facts. I mean, we're not just talking about like, you know, supposition. This gentleman <laughs> discovered uh, water and how it cured many ailments. Yeah, it is him, uh, Dr. Uh, Batman Gellich. Your body's many cries for water. Because there's also another one that I like, by, written by a different person. Um, can't remember his name right now, but uh, you can pick it up. You know, the places that you normally pick up books, I don't have anything to do with that. Uh, but there's um, several different versions. It has been, uh, what do they call it when they update, newly updated and stuff? So you can go uh, and get the latest version if you want, but any of those are fine. Uh, he also had one that was on obesity that he talks about. Uh, with regard to water but this gentleman discovered because he was in an Iranian prison and he talks about this in his lecture that he was in an Iranian prison if I remember correctly for about 10 years and he was a doctor and the only thing he had to treat these patients was water hmm. so when they would come to him with these different ailments I don't even care what it was he would prescribe a certain amount of water for them to drink and as they began to do this, they began to get better. <laughs> and uh, and he, he the lecture is amazing. If you if you guys get a chance, check it out. I'll put a link in the description um, at the end of the broadcast for you to go check it out. So you won't have to search for it if you don't want to. And uh, it, it, it's just uh, there's so much information. I had to listen. To, I've probably listened to it at least eight times already. And I could listen to it eight more, and there's going to be stuff that I'm going to pick up that I missed the first eight times because it's that much information. And he literally will have you amazed about this wondrous gift that we know comes from the creator who is the Lord Jesus Christ, water. You know, your your body is like, they say somewhere between 65 and 85% water. Yeah. Uh, so you you need it. That there's a right way and a wrong way to take it in, and he goes over that. It's just really uh, fascinating and amazing, and I think wondrous information. Awesome. But I thank both of you for your comments on those topics. Thank you so very much. Sure. Um, I was going to talk briefly. I'm not going to go on and on uh, about my topic tonight as a health tip, uh, which was something I think people may find some wondrous benefits in. Most of you probably always uh, already get a little bit of this now depending on how many greens you eat. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to let you eat your Brussels sprouts, but you should eat your Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah, you <do. laughs> uh, which is chlorophyll. And that spells C-H-L-O-R-O-P-H-Y-L-L. -L. I'm going to talk briefly about the health 
benefits and proven health benefits of chlorophyll. And what's amazing, when I first started learning about chlorophyll, was that it has the same chemical, I believe the correct word I would use here is structure. Uh, you know how they do those diagrams and they show you like the molecular structure of things? Mm -hmm. Well, it has the same formula <laughs> that you use for blood with one exception. The center one that they use, it would be like the nucleus of it or the main part is in blood, it's iron, but in chlorophyll, it's magnesium. And what people are saying is that uh, chlorophyll helps build the blood for people who are anemic. So you research the health benefits for that concerning anemia. I make no medical claims here. I'm just telling you what I've read in recent articles about chlorophyll, some by doctors, some by medical professionals, and others by uh, people who are what you might call health nuts. But this is by uh, this article, I'm going to read a brief, just brief snips from it by Dr. Axe. I'll put a link so that you guys can go read it for yourselves about the five proven chlorophyll benefits because I want to keep it short. I've actually found articles with like, you know, 18 benefits of, of chlorophyll. Um, it helps fight cancer. Now, this is not my claim. This is this is in the article. Studies have found that chlorophyll and liquid uh, chlorophyllin, a similar semi-synthetic mixture made in laboratories to be used in supplements, often called liquid chlorophyll, can bind to potential carcinogens and interfere with how they are absorbed within the human gastrointestinal tract. And then these, uh, this helps stop them from being circulated throughout the body and reaching susceptible tissues, such as those within the joints or heart. And studies done by Linus Pauling in the Institute at Oregon State University showed that chlorophyllin and chlorophyll were equally effective at blocking uptake of alpha aflatoxin B1 in humans and decreasing biomarkers of aflatoxin induced DNA damage. Findings from several other animal and human studies suggest that these effects help lower the risk of certain types of cancers, including liver and colon cancer. So you guys may want to do more research on the health benefits of chlorophyll. Sister, uh, Angel or Brother Cripps, have you guys ever used chlorophyll? I mean, other than what you get, because chlorophyll is what makes the plants green. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, like spinach or mm -hmm. like I was saying, Brussels sprouts or salad even. Um, there's different, if you research it, you can find out what the chlorophyll levels are approximately in various types of green vegetables. And you can either eat more of that, like kale is probably very high. The darker the vegetable, the more chlorophyll is in it. So mm -hmm. Uh, you might want to check it out. One, one that's really good is alfalfa because the alfalfa roots actually go down. I didn't even know this until a few years ago, uh, about 75 feet down into the earth. So it's pulling a lot of the nutrients from deep in the soil. I didn't know alfalfa roots went that deep. Did you, Brother Cripps? I did not, no. I'm just ordering some chlorophyll now because you reminded me. <laughs> My yes. it, uh, it has different properties in it that are, are really good for you. Uh, and it's a good way to get those properties in you that are bio, what you would call bioavailable. Because like you can take certain supplements and your body may take a little bit of it. But it's not that easy for the body to, to take it in or, for lack of a better term, digest it. And chlorophyll is one of those ways. Because some of y'all might like be like, um, yeah, might like be like, some of y'all might not be able to eat eight cups of salad or right. 10 cups of salad a day. But you could take, you know, a shot glass full of chlorophyll. Another uh, good thing is I was on a wheatgrass kick for a long time. That's another way to do it. You don't have to go and spend $5 a shot at the little juicing bars. You can do that. Uh, there's some people that grow their own. You can look at that. There's all kind of videos here on YouTube because there's chlorophyll in that. Uh, but you can also buy the powder. And there's some very good powders out there where they've already, you know, like freeze dried this stuff and did all the work. And it's in a uh, what cellophane bag that's resealable and you can, or you can buy it in a glass container, whatever floats your boat and you can get uh, your chlorophyll that way. There's all kinds of ways. 
research it for yourself and pick which one you think is best. But it also improves, number two, uh, liver detoxification. So those of you who might be having issues in that work, in that area, do your research on this and see uh, what the health benefits are concerning uh, improving liver detoxification. Uh, it promotes and protects healthy cells and bodily tissues uh, by increasing phase two biotransformation enzymes. These promote optimal liver health and therefore the body's natural elimination of potentially harmful toxins. Some early studies involving animals show that chlorophyllin may reduce the risk of aflatoxin-induced liver damage or liver cancer by increasing activity of these phase two enzymes by removing these bodily toxins. So there's another example of the health benefits of chlorophyll. Number three, it uh, speeds up, easy for me to say, wound healing. Chlorophyllin seems to slow the rate at which harmful bacteria reproduce, making it beneficial for wound healing and preventing infections. Since about the 1940s, chlorophyllin has been added to certain ointments used to uh, heal persistent open wounds in humans, such hmm. as vascular ulcer and pressure ulcers. It's been found to help lower inflammation caused by injuries or wounds, promote healing, and even control odors caused by bacteria accumulation. You'll find that there are a lot, there'll be uh, articles and people's uh, making attestations that it helps with bad breath and some body odors because it uh, does help with odor. So that's something you might want to check out. Um, mm -hmm. Number four, improves digestion and, Brother Cripps, this is on the topic you were talking about, weight control. Mm -hmm. Another way that chlorophyll improves detoxification is by speeding up waste elimination, balancing fluid levels, and reducing cases of constipation. Additionally, preliminary research shows that chlorophyll benefits the metabolism and increases the likelihood of success mm -hmm. with weight loss efforts. A 2014 study <laughs> conducted by the Department of Experimental Mental Medical Science at Lund University, that's L-U-N-D, in Sweden, found that chlorophyll supplements taking along with a high carbohydrate meal, decreased feelings of hunger, evaluated, excuse me, elevated chloro, let me see, get this right, chlocystokinin, I'll spell it, C-H-O-L-E-C-Y-S-T-O-K-I-N-I-N levels and help prevent hypoglycemia in overweight women. Now, this is according to the article that I'm going to put a link in the description. So when you research that more, find out for yourself the benefits that may be associated with weight loss and blood sugar levels. Number five, protects the skin. There's some evidence that chlorophyll benefits the skin uh, health due to its antiviral effects, allowing to help stop the development of cold sores within the mouth and or genital area caused by the herpes simplex virus. Some early studies have found that when chlorophyll containing ointment or cream is applied to the skin, it helps reduce the number of sores that appear and speeds up healing time, making it a natural herpes treatment. Chlorophyll also might be able to protect the skin from shingles by reducing the symptoms that are so painful, the sores, plus lower the risk of skin cancer. Mm -hmm. Injecting chlorophyll directly into the skin or applying it via lotion has been found to help reduce the recurrence of cancerous cells in people with basal cell carcinoma, a very common type of skin cancer. Again, I'll put a link in the description uh, concerning this article. How chlorophyll works. Chlorophyll can be found in all green plants. This, is in, this includes leafy greens and other veggies we commonly eat, plus certain types of algae or bacteria. While chlorophyll is totally natural, a similar semi-synthetic mixture called chlorophyllin is made in laboratories to be used in supplements, such as those uh, marketed as liquid chlorophyll. These supplements 
have been in existence for more than 50 years and are commonly used to treat wounds, body odor, digestive problems, and other health concerns with practically no side effects at all. Mm -hmm. You probably know that plants couldn't live without chlorophyll, but maybe you're wondering what kind of chlorophyll benefits there are for humans. As mentioned, chlorophyll is linked to natural cancer prevention, blocks carcinogenic effects within the body, and protects DNA from damage caused by toxic molds like aflatoxin. Chlorophyll blend supplements are believed to help neutralize antioxidants, which means they effectively decrease oxidative damage caused by factors like a poor diet, chemical carcinogens, UV light exposure, and radiation. And the article goes on. I'm not going to go on at length here. I just wanted to, to stop there. That'll titillate you to go check it out, read the rest of it. Uh, it's found on Dr. Axe's website, but I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out for yourselves. It's very well written. Uh, it's one of my favorite articles about it. There are many other, I could get, I probably could have gave you a dozen others that I've read on chlorophyll. But um, for people who have anemia, you'll find out that that is also one of the things it helps build blood and there's documentation for that so get out there and do some research turn off the tv and learn something about chlorophyll mm. did anybody have anything they wanted to add that you knew about chlorophyll i did not but i do eat uh, we do eat spinach salad uh with uh, other vegetables in it every day so it is part of my diet but no i did not awesome. specifically know that uh I mean, I, I, I know that greens are good for you, but I didn't understand the content or the reason why uh, they're so good. So that that's uh, extremely helpful, at least for me. Okay, Brother Cripps, you know I have to do it, right? You're strong to the finish because you <laughs> eat the <to> finish. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sister Angel, did, did I share with you some things? She said she just got through ordering. Now, don't get your husband mad at me because you're burning up his credit card now. No, I get, I'm ordering from Swanson. I think that's what you told me, the, the Swanson uh, 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 farm, well, the vitamin place, Swanson Health or something. Swanson, um, Swanson yeah. has some pretty good products. Yes, they do. Yes. So uh, that's actually, what... I think that's the one. Yeah, that's the one I was using before this other brand when I when they were sold out. Sometimes you had to go find it somewhere else. But yeah, yeah you, you yeah. can't go you can't really go wrong. You just how many do you take to know what the ingredients are? On. on 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 the chlorophyll, I probably take somewhere between two and four tablespoons a day. Oh, so you get the liquid stuff. Uh huh. Yes, but you, okay. but it's really up to you, convenience sake, how what's better for you. Because some people, if they're traveling, the pills are going to be much more convenient because the bottle could leak on you, and you will have a ham butt mess because that stuff is green, 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 green. Would you and say it that the stain. liquid's better? <laughs> um, yeah. If you're not going to be traveling and you don't mind refrigerating and having to get it out of the refrigerator, uh, yes. But you, you probably okay. have to refrigerate the pills anyway, unless they're dry. Because if they're liquid, um, that that gel is probably going to need to be refrigerated. But read the label. I'm glad. I'm sure. glad I asked you that because uh, I was uh, I hadn't um, actually checked out yet, so I'm gonna get the liquid instead. But but thank you. Yeah, I'm just so glad you reminded me because I know when I was taking spirulina, like I said before, um, spirulina, I do feel like it tremendously boosted my energy and my mood, but it also ended up having like side effects like. Uh, like hormonal side effects, um, like uh, 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 with, uh, I'm trying to remember. I basically, uh, my, like I, I, I was very uh, almost like, felt like I had hot flashes and all kinds of weird stuff, like female hormone type stuff. So, um, I, and I found out that, that the spirulina is not as good as chlorophyll because spirulina actually can, like you can't just take as much spirulina as you feel like because uh, it, it can have mm -hmm. some pretty bad side effects uh, for right. women. So, um, <laughs> and and also there's some other stuff that, that they thought could be dangerous, but chlorophyll mm -hmm. is um, better in all in all respects. So uh, definitely uh, can take that because I, I will say for sure the spirulina um, had uh, a lot of benefits uh, to it also. So if chlorophyll's like like that, but minus the bad side effects, then uh, yeah, I would advise people to try it because I felt better than I'd ever felt. And it, a lot of spirulina has a lot of chlorophyll in it. Um, so mm -hmm. it could have been the chlorophyll it itself that was that was yeah. uh, that was making me feel better. So yeah, thank you. 
That's yeah. that's one of those things you get one of those like wonder supplements, right? Uh, and and you really you <laughs> it, it changes uh, a lot about your life um, if you find oh, something yeah. that helps your energy and your mood. So yes, ma'am. And what I love about it is most of us are magnesium deficient anyway, and it has magnesium, copper, and a number of other properties in there. So it's it's like you're getting this little extra boost, especially yes. if you know you miss taking your multivitamin, a good multivitamin, which hopefully you're taking a, a whole food based vitamin because some of this other stuff is not really uh, bioavailable to the body. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, what, that's what spirulina was supposed to be like, I mm -hmm. thought was kind of like a multivitamin. Um, well, it, it kind of is. But at the same time, it's blended with a bunch of um, with the greens. But some people, there's a, like you were saying, what you were describing, where they're having some issues with it after, if you take it too long. I think I was reading an article where they didn't recommend taking it for longer than about eight weeks, and then you should stop for a period of time. Now I'm talking about spirulina, and then, go and, you know, and then go back to it. You might stop for a month and then go back to it. Because you remember the Bible says, let how much be done in excess? Nothing. Brother Cripps? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Okay. Brother Cripps went to sleep. We'll get him in a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing be done in sure, yeah. excess. I know I'm messing with you. Yeah. So that's just remember that, beloved. Nothing should be done in excess. Sometimes you need to take a pause. I know I don't worry about it. If I take my vitamins and I take them for ten days straight and I miss a day, that's okay. I count it towards let nothing be done in excess, and I just pick up the next day. But um, you know, don't stress over it. But do a little research for yourself. You might find this be this will be exactly maybe what the missing link was for you in your life that you needed that little boost. And what I like about it is, when, you remember what it was talking about, uh, it'll help people where, uh, that are constipated. It did, It has never given me that where you take it and you got to run to the bathroom. No. So you, you, sh you shouldn't have to worry about that. It's never been my experience with it. If you're not going to be taking more than the recommended daily dose, you should be fine. But the other thing that I found, too, is I was reading an article that said that by taking the chlorophyll, because you can put it in your water, so you don't have to like just make a cup. You could make you a 32 ounce bottle, put two tablespoons in it, drink it, and sip on it. You know, as you would your normal water, and it causes that water to hydrate like you had three times the water. Mm. So that's pretty cool because you know sometimes we have days where we're stressed or we're really running around and we don't get to drink more than 32 or 40 ounces of water during the course of that day and you'll feel worn out and kind of dehydrated by the time you get home and this is a good way to stay properly hydrated until you can get more water in you so mm -hmm. that's just another added benefit moving right along before um uh, i forget because I do not want to eliminate Brother Cripps if he's ready. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure he is because I know he prepared. I'm, did you have fun? I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to announce it because this is the time for – I don't have a drum roll yet. I, I'm going to get one for him, but I got to get one that's not copyright. <laughs> or whether oh yeah, the copyrighted sure. music, yeah. you know, for the music. I'm going to get yeah. one for you, Brother Cripps. I'm not playing. For okay. Cripps Movie Corner. So here we go. Now, last week, we told you guys what movie to go watch if you wanted to. And I even put it link in last week's uh, broadcast for you to be able to watch it for free, legally, online. You cannot beat free if it's free as me. <laughs> so, Brother Cripps, what movie was that that you're going to break down for us this week? The Omega Man. Awesome. I'm so excited because I have... I had not seen this movie since, oh my goodness, I was a child, maybe preteen, the last time I actually saw this movie because it just kind of disappeared and they weren't playing it on television anymore. Darn. Okay, so I watched um, God Grew <laughs> Tired of Us because I, for some reason, thought that was the one you were reviewing, was the one, uh, the documentary about the, um, uh, uh, the Sudanese um uh oh. refugees and i for some reason i thought that's the one you because i thought 
that's what I had in my head that we that was when you were going. But it's okay. It's okay. I I I, I just thought I did good this time. But um, hold on, Sister uh, Angel. Let me write that excuse down so I can remember next time I want to watch. Yes, yeah, that's right. Just like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you have no idea how hard it is for me to sit okay. through movies, <laughs> and I did it, and I did the wrong one. Okay. Well, you you're still forgiven. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. So now <laughs> now you get to have fun because you can go back and watch it anyway, and see if Brother right. Cripps critique is as wonderful as I think it's going to be. So, brother, brother Chris, I might have please. one to do next week. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll mm. come to that at the end of Brother Cripps' critique. I want to hear what you have to say. Yes. Brother Cripps, right. please go ahead with your critique. Yeah, yeah. So, The Last Man on Earth uh, is a movie, and it's actually been done several times. The first time it was done, uh, it had, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, I'm gonna have to look it up. I forgot. Uh, are oh, the cast of the characters there? You needed one yeah, of the that, characters' names. Vincent Price. Vincent Price. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, it's it's based on a, a book written by Richard Matheson. Uh, if you've, I am absolutely fascinated by post-apocalyptic uh, movies. Uh, part of it is seeing how people survive. Um, you know the things things not being um you know, normal the way they, the way they uh, were before and, and seeing how people react to that. It's just fascinating to me. And I've actually seen um, probably just about every last man on earth type or post-apocalyptic movie. I'm sure there, there might okay. be uh, one. Let out me there. stop you there. Okay. What would be your favorite so far out of all the ones you've seen? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> wow. You stumped me on that one. Uh, okay. Best one. Uh, oh, wow. What a, Lisa, what a great question. <laughs> I'll um, give you a second to think about it. You can come back to it. We can table it for right now because uh, you weren't expecting me to ask you that question. And it may take you a minute as you're talking, you may remember. So go ahead and continue. Yeah, at, actually, yeah, that's very true because my, my my brain is whirring. I'm thinking about doing the doing the uh, review. Right. And now I'm like, I've totally switched <laughs> over all my uh, brain power over to to uh, try to try to pick which one I would pick. Um, I did like the remake of this. So I am Legend with Will Smith mm. uh, was the modern day remake. It was, it was very similar in some ways. Um, mm-hmm. CGI was a little little off, but in in the movie that I'm reviewing in the Mega Man, basically what they did is they just pasted. They made him look pale. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, part of the uh, the virus, uh, the the disease that occurs in the movie and in the story, uh, made them albino. So they had really really white hair, kind of gray makeup that they put on them. And uh, what really was affected was their eyes. They had really really ice blue eyes, mm-hmm. and they were light sensitive. Uh, mm-hmm. So they couldn't come out during the day and you know, held fire in their face. You know, uh, they, they, they were very sensitive to light. So any kind of light they would uh, uh, run away from. Uh, so you basically have the character of Neville. He was a doctor before everything fell apart. I mean, obviously, he's still a doctor, but he's just not practicing anymore. Um, and the story goes that the, there's uh, war breaks out, nuclear holocaust, uh, but also uh, the, they, in the bombs that they dropped, there's some kind of um, uh, virus that uh, killed off most of the population. So mm-hmm. in, in the beginning, they show uh, the character, Dr. Neville, Charlton Heston, kind of driving around empty streets, and there's skeletons and oh car my god like i have to stop you brother cribs because everything you're saying you've checked off about four or five things <laughs> that we're all we're experiencing right now that parallels things from that movie the virus empty streets i mean i'm like while you're talking i'm going uh we're living what some of what he's describing from this movie. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that noticed that. If you guys were picking up on that out in the chat, let me know because I'm like, uh, he just mentioned like three things that we're already experiencing right now 
in this scamdemic. But go ahead, Brother Chris. I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're, no, you're absolutely right. Um, there, there are lots of uh, things that can can be related uh, to what we're going through now, uh, and the possibility of what's to come. Now we know, biblically speaking, we know how it ends, and it doesn't end up with one person being alive and everyone else being dead. That's not the way it ends up. But things will end, and God said that if He didn't speed up the timeline, there'd be no flesh left alive. So. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have to worry about ending up in a scenario like that. But the other things uh, that are going on certainly uh, will affect us if the Lord tarries and if, if we're left here, regardless of uh, what your belief is, any any person's belief on when the rapture will happen. So, uh, mm -hmm. but there we know that there will be believers whether they were believers before or not believers, and then the stuff happens and they remember their Bible stories and, and turn to God and become believers during the Great Tribulation or not, we know that that, that will happen. So someone is going to have to deal with some of the stuff that's coming. Um, mm -hmm. Better to be prepared either way. Uh, but anyway, so this uh, Dr. Neville is driving around empty streets, and this is done uh, in 1971, the movie was made. So it's it's pretty outdated, but I don't mind things like that. I don't even mind mm -hmm. old black and white movies. That's not a, that's not a problem for me. Um, so there's no CGI. Now, keep in mind, if you watch it, you know, there's no CGI in this. There's a couple, uh, you know, they, they do their own stunts. There was a there's a scene where it's riding a motorcycle and he's got a girl in the back and stuff. And you can tell it's a uh, tell it's a stunt man. It's not Charlton Heston, things like that, you know, but it's 1971. I mean, you got to kind of take that in consideration. Um, and rather than zombies, you know, in the story, they were they 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 could speak in the story by Richard Mather, and they could speak, and mm -hmm. the movie, uh, the movie pl uh, played close to home on that particular topic. Uh, so he's driving around, and he has this compound that he's uh, built for himself uh, a couple floors up, and he's got lights on the outside, you know, because that's a weapon for him. If they, they try to come at night, he just turns his lights on so they can't come near. The darkness and, uh, doesn't like the light. That well, yeah, that's one of the major themes in this. Um, you know, and uh, Paul says that we walk in light. We're we're not children of the night. We walk in light, not in darkness. Mm -hmm. and wicked, unbelieving walk in the dark. Uh, also, we're awake. You know, if we're a believer, uh, yeah. we're awake in terms of salvation. While other people are asleep, if you walk in darkness, mm -hmm. sleep in the night, things yeah. like that. So that was a really big theme in this one. So, uh, mm -hmm. but this is the daytime. This part of the storytelling is the, it's the daytime. He's driving around and collecting things. He also talks to himself. He has an eight-track mm -hmm. player in his car, and he's playing uh, uh, what I would consider elevator music. It's not bad elevator <laughs> music, but you know, classical, <laughs> you know, uh, easy listening uh, kind of stuff as he's driving around. And he's mm -hmm. uh, basically he he writes things down. And he also has a tape recorder, and he's looking for the nest of these uh, night people. Uh, the people that uh, have been affected by the virus. And also uh, a byproduct of the virus isn't just being an albino and having your eyes uh, change. It changes your personality. And they do uh, mm. show that with one one of the characters later. Uh, she gets infected and she's a completely different person than she was before. So there's physical changes and also uh, psychological changes. And they are murderous. Uh, they have no problem the killing other people. And also, mm. uh, the the night people are a uh, cult, very much a cult. They have uh, monk uniforms on and things like that, mm. and sunglasses at night, kind of like Corey Hart from the eighties. <laughs> no, but probably nobody gets that. And hoods too, right? Hoods, yeah, hoods. M a monk, mm -hmm. no standard monk. Outfit. Right, right, right. So they come out at night and uh, they do carry fire, which I found interesting. They carry torches and stuff. And uh, that, that was a little inconsistency that I saw in it because, you know, if, they, if they're so uh, sensitive to the light, then how can they hold a torch? Of course, they got the, mm -hmm. like they wear sunglasses. They're, they're that sensitive to light. Mm -hmm. um, so during the day, he's fine. They can't come out at all during the day. So he, he basically has the run of the town to himself and he thinks he's the last man. So he's, he's, he's got this, um, the stronghold that he's built. Uh, one of the interesting things is he plays chess with a bust of Caesar and talk, mm. you know, carries on conversation. 
you know, and you have to consider if you were the last man on earth, you didn't have anyone to talk to. Maybe there's a lot of us that are, uh, uh, could go a long time without talking to other people, or we would, we would think that we could, um, mm -hmm. but they discovered people in prison, uh, even antisocial people, you put them in a, put them in a hole and don't have any human contact for 30 days and things start to happen. You uh, physically, physiologically, uh, there are changes that uh, take place. And I would think it would be the same thing, even if we weren't in a cell, if there were no people around. And I, I've thought about this so many times, you know, like if that were to happen to me, like how would I would deal with it. Um, and it would depend on what was available. I mean, you know, if you only had one DVD, and that's all you had, and and somehow the power was still on, and you just watched the same movie and you know, over and over and over again. That would get tiresome. But, um, in in fact, one of the things he does is he goes into a movie theater and watches the movie Woodstock. It's the only movie available, and he puts it on himself and hooks up a generator, and he'll sit and watch the movie, and he ends up quoting the movie. So, um, it depicts that he's done this several times. You know, mm -hmm. enough that he would memorize the the dialogue, uh, not an exciting movie to have if you're uh, stuck in a, a post-apocalyptic world in, in the seventies for sure. Um, so anyway, the night people come out at night and they carry their torches and, and, uh, they basically harass him. They know he's, they think he's the only, uh, man on earth and they want to kill him because he represents science. He's a doctor. They, uh, these people believe that science is the reason for all their problems. That's a little different than today because we have people that are trusting science or want us to trust science. Uh, uh, but the people that are affected by the virus, of course, they're angry and they blame uh, Dr. Neville. He didn't he didn't do it himself, but he uh, had created a virus. He was uh, before everything really fell apart. He was working on as people were getting sick. He was working on a virus and he gave it to himself, an experimental virus. So he. Uh, figured out by using the experimental um, vaccine. I said virus, but it's vaccine. Well, Use back it. then, excuse me, Brother Cribs, back then, didn't they call them, um, uh, not, they didn't call them vaccines. They called them serums. Serums, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they do, they call it that. They don't call it, a, uh, uh, they did use the term vaccination, but the serum itself, that's what they called it. <clears throat> so he gave it to himself um, and, and it worked, you know, um, he was actually starting to get sick and he, so that's why he uh, used it on himself without any testing. He was in a helicopter crash and uh, the helicopter pilot had gotten sick and that's why he, he wrecked and uh, he survived the crash and uh, he had been carrying the virus to like the equivalent of the CDC at that time. Uh, to see if it worked and start doing testing and whatnot. So he ends up using it on himself, and it just happened to work. So good good for him. Um, during the day, uh, aside from watching movies he'd seen several times, he re uh, records little notes to himself. And what he's doing is looking for the nest where these people are staying, these night people, because they harass him. Every night he's up mm -hmm. there listening to music, talking to the bust of Caesar and uh, drinking. And they're outside, maniacal laughter, and you know Neville. They're like saying his name. Wow. I mean, it's enough to drive you crazy. <laughs> um, and uh, every once in a while, he'll go off to the balcony and pop off a couple shots if they get too close, you know. And and, and uh, he kills uh, a, a few of them during this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I won't tell every detail, but uh, so these night people, a couple, a couple things you need to know about them. They speak of themselves as the brothers. So mm. along with being maniacal and things like that and blaming Neville and blaming science for everything, they consider, uh, you know, they wear the sunglasses and stuff. And they got sensitivity to light. I explained uh, some of the things they're dealing with. Uh, yeah. So they, mm -hmm. they call themselves the family. This guy's uh, interesting left. The guy that leads them, his name is Matthias. And uh, they all have a bruise over their left eye for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, and they consider, uh, uh, they call it the mark, which is the eyes. Uh, later, some of the dialogue says that he doesn't, he doesn't, they're talking about Neville, and says he doesn't possess the mark. He doesn't have the mark. Wow. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. 
Um, so because he doesn't possess the mark, they're not like him. They want to kill him as well. And they consider the life they lived before as a burden. And the, mm -hmm. the, later on, they catch him. They catch him and they pull him inside and they have like a little uh, mock trial for him and stuff. And Matthias, the leader of the brothers, is saying he doesn't have the mark. And uh, he calls him a murderer because he, and he uses electricity. And uh, they don't share the same uh, uh, pigment. They're, you know, their skin color is different. Their hair color is different. And they, uh, the Matthias calls him, he doesn't have the pretty marks. That's what they call him, pretty marks. Their eyes are, mm -hmm. like I said, the light blue. Uh, mm -hmm. And he sees it as punishment from God for their excesses in using of technology. Mm -hmm. and that it was a scourge. But this punishment has freed them now mm -hmm. and taken the burden of technology away from them and has enlightened them and uh, made them uh, who they are, which they consider to be better than being human. They don't want to be human again. Mm. Uh, in fact, they call him the dead. They call wow. uh, him the last man on earth, uh, at, least, at least they think he is. Mm -hmm. um, they call him the dead, which I thought was interesting. He's the dead, and they're alive now because they're unburdened by the technology, and they have uh, these... Uh, special uh, lights. The, they don't seem to have superhuman strength or anything weird like that. Uh, right. They just are maniacal. I mean, just mm. crazy, crazy little cult. Uh, so in the in the context of the story, he uh, is uh, in a clothing store and he was looking and he accidentally knocks a mannequin over and he looks over and he looks at this one mannequin and it's standing still, but he's kind of looking at it and then all of a sudden the mannequin runs off. Mm -hmm. And at first he thinks he's going crazy, you know, because he hasn't, he doesn't think anyone's alive. He hasn't seen a living person mm -hmm. and he gives chase and uh, she gets away from him. And then later they catch him and they take him to a stadium and they put him on a, not a cross, but it, it, it was like that to me. It's like he was on a cross and they uh, you know, tied him up and they were going to set him on fire. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, kill him for crimes he committed, you know, like I said, using technology and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, if someone turns the stadium lights on and then you see this guy uh, come running off from the shadows uh, into the light and he uh, cuts him loose and, and uh, gets him out of there uh, uh, at gunpoint though. So you're mm -hmm. not quite sure, you know, what, what's going on here, but he's like, Oh my gosh, there's, there's another person alive. So he saw the, the African-American girl that was a mannequin uh, that ran off, and now he's seen this other person. So mm -hmm. I'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, they take him back to the compound. They know who he is. They know that he had uh, re reported to have come up with uh, with the serum. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're wanting him to take a look at uh, one of their members. So uh, there's several people, actually, in this compound. Mm -hmm. Uh, women and children, other men, I would say there's maybe 25, 30 people, at least mm -hmm. in this group that are uh, living. And one of them's getting sick and it's slow. He's got fever and all that, but he's starting to get this uh, sickness. And the doctor, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Neville checks on him and opens his eyes and he can, he, he's seeing that his eyes are starting to change color. His skin pigment is starting to change and his hair is actually going uh, gray. It's a boy. Right. Like a 13 right. Year old, 13 year old uh, African American. Mm -hmm. Um, so he, uh, decides the, the stuff he needs, he needs to take him back to his compound. He's got the, uh, laboratory much like in, I am legend. He's got a laboratory in, in his stronghold. And so he takes this guy back there and, and, uh, long story short with him, he gives him some of the serum. He makes a, a little bit, just enough to try mixed mm -hmm. with his blood because his blood has produced an antibody. So he carried mm -hmm. the cure around with him in his blood. Mm -hmm. So um, there's uh, there's definitely something there as far as the blood uh, curing other people and that I don't have to uh, draw that out for uh, believers for sure. Um, uh, but uh, the, the guy, the kid, uh, Richard is his name, the boy that was getting sick. He does get better. So now they know mm -hmm. the serum works. So mm -hmm. he's, uh, they don't show it, but you know from the storytelling that he's now producing more of the serum. And uh, he, he gets, uh, I don't know, like a pretty big jar full of it, full of the serum mm -hmm. he's made. Mm -hmm. 
and he's carrying it and he's trying to get it to them. And their plan was to get the serum and then leave the area, you know, go somewhere where no man's been a long time and stuff like that mm -hmm. and, and start mm -hmm. life again, get everyone protected from the virus and, and, and basically start civilization over again. Uh, so that's what the, that he's on the way to do that. And they uh, break into his compound. They kill the generator. He goes back and tries to fix it. Uh, meanwhile, the female character, kind of his love interest, the, the mannequin girl, um, she somehow mm -hmm. gets the gets the virus. And they explain earlier that some people it takes a long time to, for the change to happen. Other people it happens instantaneously. And that's apparently what happened with her. Mm -hmm. And you see that she's she's different now. She she looks at this leader, Matthias, as a messiah. She even says it in one of the lines. She says, messiah, messiah. And he has kind of a like a Dracula like power, like she's drawn to him and she wants to obey him and do what he says and things like that. So he's got this kind of supernatural power over the uh, the brotherhood of these these people that have this affliction. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's changed and 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 uh, 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 Neville notices that and he's got this stuff with him and he climbs down. He's trying to. He grabs her by the arm. He's trying to take him, take her away, so you know he he can give her the uh, serum. Mm -hmm. And they, um, uh, Matthias is on his balcony because they bust everything up and they destroy everything. And then he throws a spear, and uh, uh, Neville gets hit, and he's bleeding mm -hmm. profusely into a fountain. Uh, mm -hmm. But the guy that saved him in the stadium comes, and he he is holding the the jar of serum. And just as he's starting, he be, you know, losing some strength and he drops it, but the guy picks it up and he's got it. He's got it in his possession mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, he dies. Neville, Neville dies blood in the All fountain, right. but he produced the serum and, um, they take it back and they don't show them giving the serum to everyone and all that. Mm -hmm. but they show them packing up and, and Jeeps and stuff and leaving and going away. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea is that, he saved the lives of all those people and there may be more people alive. And the guy that saved him uh, conveniently had been a, a, a scientist of some sort or, or, or doctor in training and things like that. So mm -hmm. he knew how to make the serum, make more of the serum from the amount of uh, concentrated blood that, uh, that uh, Dr. Neville left for them. So he ends up being the savior of mankind uh, whatever mankind exists uh, right. in the story. Um, so there are a lot of similarities, a lot of things in there. One of the uh, little girl characters is talking to Dr. Neville and he said, are you God? And he didn't answer, but you know, they, they, they didn't make that assertion that because he's, uh, mm -hmm. he's saving humanity, that he's a God like character or a representation of God for sure. So the, the biggest thing in this thing, you know, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Lisa, you know, uh, they walk in darkness. Uh, Neville walks in, in the light. The people walk in the light. Mm -hmm. The people that haven't been affected. Also, the Mark thing, I, I found yes. that quite interesting. The, 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 mm -hmm. And you have the Mark, and it also changes your personality. And I think that's true. Yes. I, I, I believe that whatever the Mark it is, it yes. changes your uh, genetic code somehow you're adding something right mm -hmm. and, uh, i was gonna say that brother because there's a lot of people that saying that whatever the mark of the beast ends up being it is going to change they perceive believe suspect mm -hmm. that it will change people's as they say dna yep yep and look how far, far back this concept goes. This is 1971. Yeah, there might exactly. even be movies older than this that express the same thing as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it changes the way they act and and everything. It, it physically changes them. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a lot in that. Um, the blood thing is is pretty big. I already mentioned that. You know that he's mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of set up as a savior. Christ's blood is what saves us. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it, it prevents us. The interesting thing about the people with the mark, they were offered, he offered them the serum and they didn't they want, didn't to take want it. it. They didn't want Ooh. it. They had no desire. I saw something else just now thinking about it. 
when he's in that fountain when he dies yeah um you know his arms are spread almost like in a cross with yep. the way his arms lay out mm -hmm. but it's a fountain that his blood is pouring into yep. and you've seen this concept in old christian hymns about the blood of jesus and flowing and mm -hmm. a fountain that never ends kind of thing so oh, yeah. just wanted to add that yeah 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 so um yeah that's about it it's uh it's it, for for it being 1971 there's a it, it's a it's a well-made movie um it did fairly well at the box office when it came out uh, mm -hmm. It's definitely a cult classic. A lot of people have, have gone back and watched it. I saw it originally when I was a kid on, mm -hmm. on TV as a rerun. Yeah, so did I. Um, and I liked it back then. Of course, I had nowhere near as much understanding back then as I, I did now watching it. Um, so it was pretty good. Um, the remake of it, Some pe a lot of people didn't like the remake. I Am Legend with Will Smith, but it's basically mm -hmm. the same story. Even use the name Dr. Neville. Uh, right. You know, uh, but in this one, it's CGI, but they do a really good job. The the zombies, there there's one that's smart, but the rest of them, they're just they're beasts. You know, they don't they don't uh, talk. They're they're typical uh, bald headed zombies. They lose all their hair and they they um, they hang out. You know, in the darkness and stuff, all huddled up in like a nest and stuff, and then. When night falls, then they go out and and he drives around himself as well, mm -hmm. same way Doctor Neville did. And he also is a savior. He ends up dying in the end, but mm -hmm. not uh, until he uh, creates the the uh, serum that helps save this uh, other group of people uh, that all are thankful to him for what he had done. So, um, but it's it's a similar story. There was another one. I didn't look at it, but apparently it. it didn't do very well at all. It's a, probably a really, really poorly made one with the same name. Mm -hmm. um, but the the other one I have seen, the one, the original one in 1968, mm. uh, I believe it was, uh, that had Vincent Price in it, and uh, that was that was pretty well done for the time as well. But I, I definitely preferred Omega Man. Um, I guess I liked I Am Legend a little bit more in, for for some reasons because it's more modern and the uh, uh, you know, rather than just uh, pasty gray uh, actors, you know, with white hair and, and weird eyes, uh, it just made it seem more realistic to me mm -hmm. uh, that way. I was talking to someone about it and they said they didn't like that movie because they love animals and the dog died in that, which the, the, the dog that, that travels around with him is a character that you end up loving. And he, he of, of course, it's horrible when you lose someone, uh, especially a, a pet that's, that's more than a pet to you. There's no one on earth and you have this pet that you, that you get along with. And, uh, he, uh, uh, uh gets bit trying to save, uh, his master's life. And he tries the serum on, he's tried, he's captured several of these night people or zombies or, or really. And, uh, He's tried to uh, give the serum to them. So he, up until the end, he's been failing and failing and failing. And he tries it on the dog and it doesn't work. So hmm. um, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's it. That's, uh, that's one of the, um, one of the good ones. Um, uh, as far well, as, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. It's okay. I was going to move on to the post-apocalyptic question because there's there's so oh. good ones. Okay, well then before you do that, let me let me read something real quick that may be a little interesting because just saying the word people may not really they have a concept of it, but I wanted to go look at it and see because words have meaning. Sure. Uh, the word serum, it says, uh, is the clear yellowish fluid obtained upon separating whole blood into its solid and liquid components after it has been allowed to clot, mm -hmm. also called blood serum. Blood serum from the tissues of immune, immunized animals containing antibodies and used to transfer immunity to another individual. Watery, now that's interesting because it says blood serum from the tissues of immunized animals, not immunized human beings. All right, mm -hmm. that's, that's interesting. And then also it says, a watery fluid from animal tissue, such as found in edema, and then it says whey. <laughs> uh, I don't even want to know. I don't think I even want to know what that is. 
or it says whey. Cause the first thing that came to mind was whey protein. <laughs> And I don't think I want to know any further right now. <laughs> so, um, but interesting that it's correlated to animals. Blood serum extracted from an animal that has immunity to a particular disease. And the serum contains antibodies, specific antigens that can transfer immunity to humans or other animals by means of injection. Mm -hmm. That's what serum is. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. Okay, Brother Cripps, you were going to answer for me. What out of all of the post-apocalyptic films was your favorite? Which one? Okay, I, I'm probably not going to come up with one, but I'll mention a, a few. Uh, the one I was okay. trying to think of earlier, as far as the Last Man on Earth, it is po post-apocalyptic, but this mm -hmm. guy wakes up and it was like a rapture. So there was no uh, apocalyptic, no nukes or anything. Just he wakes up and everybody's gone, like disappeared, and that's called right. the Quiet Earth. And that was uh, mm. 1985. I ended up seeing that. Uh, okay. I rented it, rented it from, uh, remember when they rented videos back in the day. Uh, right. I watched that one. Um, another older one is The World, The Flesh, and the Devil from 1959, black and white. Uh, that was pretty mm. interesting. Um, uh, Boy and His Dog, 1975. That's a good one. Also um, written by a book, uh, started by a book. Um, if you want one more recent, um, Oblivion, again, with Will Smith, 2013, uh, futuristic deal. Now, I don't know how many people like zombies movie, zombie movies, but uh, I liked uh, 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later. Both of those were very good if you're into that sort of thing. Not saying there's any uh, uh, Christian stuff in those, but um, mm -hmm. uh, Reign of Fire, uh, Waterworld is a post apocalyptic not not last man on earth but that was a good one did horrible to box office they spent millions of dollars on that and it didn't do very well but yet uh people like it um one that's more fun uh night of the comet from 1984 uh, uh centers on two female uh characters rather than male um one of the classic ones now this is a really good one children of men um, okay. Uh, from 2006. Yeah. Uh, I bakery. saw it, but I think I fell asleep on part of it, so I don't remember all of it. Well, it's a story. <laughs> Not because it, it wasn't good, I just fell asleep. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of like gloomy doomy. Oh, well, yeah. I remember. It was. Um, yeah. I, would, I would rather watch a horror movie almost than something <clears throat> that mm -hmm. me. Sorry, my, my earbud went off. I'm, I'm trying to fix it, but Ben just texted me so you heard my notification. Um, but I do want to respond to what Jason said. I'm just I'm, I'm going to try to uh, change the earbuds real quick. Okay. Um, the children of men, the interesting part about that is that there's infertility, in, infertility mm -hmm. for 20 years. So women that could have an egg are very coveted and they're, they're, they're even um, hunted. They hunt uh, women if mm. they see any and and try to take them to this compound and see if they they uh, might not be infertile. Uh, so this guy is protecting this woman who's pregnant. And that's basically what it's about. It's about everything he goes through to try to protect this random woman that he meets. Mm. Um, so that one's that one's, uh, uh, definitely strongly um, suggested. Um, probably one of the most popular one post-apocalyptic is Road Warrior. Uh, right. Came out with several incarnations of that. Um, Book of Eli, I already talked about. That's definitely uh, post-apocalyptic. Um, let's see. Uh, Days, uh, what's that one? Uh, Days of Future Past, which is an X-Man movie. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely some things happened in that. I don't really consider that a typical one. Um, the older one is Escape from New York. Uh, that one's pretty good. You know, that has the typical stuff. Or everyone's uh, um, messed up. And, um, this is more a time travel movie, but Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise, I've seen several times. It's probably one of the uh, best well done movies in a while, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen? I thought I was going to get two or three from you. you guys, so far, I think we had about 10. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen a uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane by chance? That was no, a more recent I have one. not seen that one. I would suggest that um, a Quiet Place. Have you seen that one? 
No. Anything that looks like if it looks hard, like it's gonna be a horror movie, I won't even click on it. I'm not. I'm not. I don't oh. watch horror movies anymore. But um, I well, I was. It it looked like from some of the screenshots that I saw that it might have been a horror movie, so I didn't click on it to watch it. Well, there's there's a creature in it, but it's not really horror. It's about a family that that's trying to survive, and these creatures uh, hear noise, so they mm -hmm. they have to be silent. They, you know, they they have to live life in complete silence. And one, their daughter is deaf, so they all learn mm. learned how to speak sign language before this ever happened. And that's mm. why they live so long. Most people are dead because they can't be silent. So they, these creatures pick up on any noise. Uh, that mm -hmm. one's available on Netflix if anyone has the interest in seeing that. Uh, uh, Terminator, the Terminator films, uh, right are definitely post-apocalyptic. Um, I would have to say, though, The Quiet Earth is probably one of my favorites, and I have not seen that uh, since originally. Um, another one, uh, probably close to number one, is The Road. Now, this okay. one you might... Yeah, that's what I was going to say, yep. Mm -hmm. um, this one is not a horror movie. If mm -hmm. you... If if you get a chance to see this, Lisa, I would suggest it. It's it's uh, there's per, there's definitely some spiritual connotations to this. Uh, it, it's about a man and his uh, son who are living in this kind of world, and they're tr trying to travel from one place to another on the road. And he's trying to protect his son, and, and they're trying to get there, and all kinds of all kinds of uh, obstacles are in their way. Uh, right, and that's done. Uh, from a, 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 a book uh, by a, a writer that I've read a lot of his books, Carmack McCarthy. Uh, mm -hmm. he, uh, he's an excellent writer, um, if you like that sort of thing. Um, but that'd be close to number one, and that's probably enough. Th those are some suggestions if, if people are into well, that sort of thing. I am totally shocked, Brother Cripps, because you left one off that I thought sure would have made your list for post-apocalyptic films. Well, you name it. I'm probably probably you're right. <laughs> uh, this one, I can't believe it. I thought it was '80s. It was at the cusp, the very end of 1979. Can you? Do you think? Did that give you a hint? Post-apocalyptic. I'll give you one more hint, and this is gonna be a big hint. So I'm kind of like really helping you. Mel Gibson. I, if I remember correctly, let me see. Yeah, Mel Gibson was one of the stars in the movie. Road Warriors. I, I mentioned uh, Mad Max. No, you didn't. I did. <laughs> that, that, that Road Warrior. See, I was wondering. No. Yeah, Road you Warrior. Mean... Road Warrior. Oh. The second film. Mad Max. Right. Is the first one, but it's you the didn't second. mention Mad Max. You mentioned Road Warrior. Yeah, I just said it wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Because right. I'm like, I was waiting. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get him. He forgot the best one. No. <laughs> But no. the, yeah, this one was like one of the first ones because they had all this like really weird, creepy stuff in there, yeah. Yeah. murder battles and all this crazy stuff. Yeah, they you drive know? around and stuff, and uh, water's really coveted, and they're kind of like a yeah. cult too. Actually, they're they're yes. like a weird, a weird cult. Ooh, some of this for stuff, sure. I'm telling you, yes, creepy, strange, satanic, demonic for sure. But yeah. but like where they, I guess want the world to go i don't know uh yeah. wow all i know is jesus is the only way out <laughs> so yeah. amen oh praise the lord well ladies and gentlemen we have uh, come to that i'm sorry it's oh, angel did i forget something uh, go ahead well no i just wanted to so, sorry i was messing with my earbuds i just want to say i i will i, I do think with the i'm omega man i think it's interesting that back in the 70s that the programming mm -hmm. was to think that um like they want you to obviously think of the night people as uh, as the villains and their anti technology, right? Mm -hmm. Now yeah. we have a lot of films that will actually make technology be the apocalypse. But it seems like back then they wanted um they wanted us to um to 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 trust science more and technology mm -hmm. more. And now it's sort of a right. foregone conclusion. They know the cat's out of the bag. Pandora's box is open. They don't really have to tr convince us to trust technology. Now they can mm -hmm. actually kind of tease us and taunt us with the reality that it will be our downfall in mm -hmm. all of these, um, mm -hmm. in a lot of, in a lot of film now. But, um, 
Uh, I do think it's really interesting that all I can't uh, every it seems like almost every all, all the movies I've watched. You know, I've always been a big horror fan. Anyway, um, I, I, I just uh, I can't even count how many movies seem to talk about. You know, the the movie is about this future. Uh, you know, I, I don't like the word uh, post apocalyptic because you know the apocalypse of Jesus Christ. You know, it's a, the revealing of Jesus Christ and it's telling of the world. You know that. That uh, that that they they we've associated that with the with the end of the world, you know, like like a bad mm-hmm. thing, like the you know the way that um, that we use it colloquially. And uh, uh, but anyway, uh, there's so many that have the feature, basically this 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 horde of 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 people that used to be people, but they're not quite people anymore, and mm-hmm. they have almost like a hive mind, and mm. and and you have to fear them. And they, they want to destroy you and they, they, that you're, you're the fact that you're still human in full, it's, uh, you know, makes you, um, marked, uh, in their, like for death, destruction, whether they want to eat you, whatever it is. And, um, they're, and, you know, and they're not quite human anymore. And it's, it's, it's an interesting concept because really you wouldn't have anything in real life that would have conjured up this, 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 this fear. There, you know that that this idea of of people who are not people anymore. We, right. we you know, because it's not a bunch of movies about like Mad Max is people that are they're just violent and crazed, right? But most mm-hmm. movies like this, they there's something that's changed, something's happened yeah. to them, and yeah. they're a hive mind. They yeah. act as like you know like a, like a pack, yeah. and um, there's nothing that would explain that in my mind. There's nothing that would explain why we have have this. Um, um, uh, this, this fear and why this is why this is portrayed so frequently um, in horror films. That there's no re- reference to reality, like people that try to explain like evolutionary psychology, right? Where they where they try to explain fears we have, like you know, back into the ancient past, like why we're afraid of the dark. Oh, it's because back when we were hominids, um, we had to worry about predators at night, you know, and that's what they say that that's the only reason we fear the dark, right? But there's no real explanation for fearing a subhuman uh horde a hive-minded horde you know in this post-apocalyptic world uh except that um i believe that it's 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 telling us of something to come and yeah, invasion um, of the body snatchers while you're talking about that invasion, yes mm-hmm. real quick. Mm-hmm. invasion of the body snatchers and yes. also i can't think of the name but a nicole kidman movie followed that same kind of uh, uh line where people are being replaced by aliens or whatever, but these aliens look exactly like the person that they're, um, they're replacing, they're replacing them. And uh, they have a hive mind. They're able to communicate just like an invasion of the body snatchers. They're, they're able to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Invasion of the body snatchers. I know it's like uh, uh, recently, I feel like that movie is more and more and more relevant Oh, yeah. uh, to to my life, well, and also just um, even the thing, John Carpenter's the thing. Um, oh, yeah. Even though that's mm-hmm. just one creature, but it can hide and it can take the shape of of, of the person, right? Yeah. And 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 um, and it, you know because it's like and it, you know it's like this amalgamation of all the victims it's consumed too. There's sort of a hive mind element to it. There's always something that even though they you know they're they're not uh it's not there's not an actual horde of people but it but because it like melts its victims and forms it into a big mass it, it uh, even with um uh i mean there's just countless even with you know zombie films obviously i was obsessed with zombie movies uh uh most of my life you know now i i <laughs> i don't really i can't i watched uh train to busan recently oh, that's the korean zombie that's an excellent. Yeah, that was great. I love Koreans. I love Korean people, and I love Korean movies. Um, I'm like, I'm like Team Korea. I, I really, I really like Korean. Mm-hmm. Else. Um, but so that was an incredible movie. Um, uh, and uh, uh, even though it had fast zombies, which I, I for a long time had a rule against, because that was just not fair, not reasonable. I was, too, right. I was afraid of the slow zombies, man, because that that was the deepest fear in me as a kid. I mean, I was messed up because my mm-hmm. dad let me watch zombie movies way too young. I mean, way too young, mm. like three. <laughs> I was watching Romero at three. Um, and I mm. had the, 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 it triggered me so bad when people were trying to get into a door and these things, even though they're slow, they'd be, you know, like that fear of having to get away from this, this mob. It's not that they're fast or they have so, superhuman strength. There's so many of them, 
um, that I had nightmare after night. I mean, my whole right. my whole childhood and most of my life was to, you know nightmares about zombies. I, I but but it, it, it triggers. I, I think the reason it bothered me so much was that I, I had this feeling that there was somehow that that was going to be reality one day. Right. Um, and, and deep inside, like I prepped for it before people were doing that before like you know it became the cool thing to do now where people like pretend like zombies are real and it's like a big joke this was like you know <laughs> it was in the early 90s i was doing this out of my zombie box i had zombie shutters i was very worried about zombies and i and, I, and it's not i was not a, a crazy person I, I you know as a kid i was actually quite precocious but you couldn't convince me that these things weren't real that somehow monsters weren't real because mm -hmm. of like yeah in the movies they say that until they see the monster oh monsters aren't mm -hmm. real and then there's a monster so i don't even want to hear it that doesn't make me feel better and i and i told joel recently you know because my my six-year-old she she gets scared she it's like even though we don't let her watch you know scary stuff i think it's just in the blood or something like with me uh she gets very uh she's very attracted to the idea of being scared and then she gets really scared like at night and and things like that uh she, it's it's fun for her until until she gets scared and then she's just paralyzed by it so but i told him i'm like i, I i'm not gonna t lie to her and tell her monsters aren't real you right, know right. because because that's what they did to me all my child it didn't help anything at all and it because it, you know it's not true in your gut you know it's not true they are real and um but you need to tell them tell your children what monsters really are yeah right. and 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 the easy solution to a monster should right. you encounter one which is um right. you know the the name and authority of jesus christ you know for Amen. right now i just tell her to t tell them jesus said go away <laughs> that's what i i'm mm -hmm. trying to trying to explain it to her in a way that she can understand um uh because you know rebuking all that stuff that would be about right. her uh, understanding right. right now but but um i just think it's uh, like uh, th this genre of film i think it's really telling how popular it, in it continues to be i mean more and more and more uh come out all yeah. the time and there's I always never, revelation i think it's i never happen. got the whole job the zombie thing that we like the last 10 years that people have been into it just yeah it was like such a turn off to me i was like i mean the line the whole lime green zombie color and all that stuff that people were to, it just it was like missing me with this i wasn't interested at all my brother convinced me to watch world war z so i went out oh, and watched it one. yeah well uh, yeah. i didn't want to watch it. interesting but though wanted me to watch it for some dumb reason i still didn't like the movie but um i ever i told i never liked them after i saw the original night of the living dead uh, because yes. of what happened at the end of that movie, and it traumatized yes. me. And I was, ne I promised myself I would never watch another zombie movie after that. So, right. uh, but I wanted to mention that Chow Young Cat, shout out to him in the chat. He said, I think Brother Cripps, the movie you were looking for with Nicole Kidman was The Stepford Wives. No, oh, yeah, oh, no, uh, no? that one is okay. about replacement, but that's not the one, uh. Mm -hmm. It's not the astronaut's wife or something. Like no, no, it's not. Not. It's not. That's Charlie Starr okay. or something. I, there's a okay. lot of newer movies I have. But that up. was a good movie. No, uh, the original wives is as great. well as and it what's really cool is I think the first one, get me correct me if I'm wrong, in the first step for wise they killed the wise, and I think in the second one they didn't kill the wise. The remake, if I remember that correctly. Um I'm trying to remember. And one of them they killed them. And then the other one, they like held them hostage somewhere and they didn't, or they, oh no, that's what it was. They did an implant that changed them into being the kind of wife they wanted them to be versus the other one, they killed them and replaced them with a robot or a clone or something. Mm -hmm. uh, in Inv The invasion is the one I was looking for. The invasion. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, but that stuff. was like the, the uh, invasion of the body snatchers, but they didn't call it with the body right, snatchers exactly. on it. That's, exactly. That's with Donald Sutherland, is that one? No, no, the original body snatchers in was, seven. Was in, in Donald seven. Sutherland? Yeah, okay. correct. That's you what didn't they, mention. They see you and they open their mouth and point and they make right. the sound and bring mm -hmm. it up running. Yep, I saw that one. Uh, it, was a good, it was a good flick. Did you, did, you didn't mention Escape from New York. Did you not like that one? <laughs> I thought I did. I, I I thought I mentioned it briefly. Okay, I thought. Okay, my bad. If you did, you also. I don't think you mentioned outbreak. Did I you? I did not. 
Okay. I did not. Did you like that one or? I'm not as much into the where there's some kind of pandemic, obviously, uh, but there, but actually, there's been several of those movies since the '80s. Contagion. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've that theme of an outbreak, a pandemic. Yes. They've been pushing that in our faces, preparing us for. Yes, they have. For the pandemic that we're in under right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Outbreak. Did, yeah, there, there were things I liked about it. Uh, which one was it, though, that I think it was Contagion, maybe, that had the bat? Yeah, Contagion. Yeah, from the bats. Yeah. I mean, you can't make this up. It's like you mentioned no. this stuff, and people look at you like they don't even remember the movie. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we're living the movie now. How can you yeah. not remember it? We're living it, yes. They're shutting you, you know, <laughs> Brother Crips, now check this out. Movies like, let's say, Titanic... Uh, about the ship that went down huh. 2012. You remember the big, uh, that yep. big movie? Um, the one with the earthquake with uh, San Andreas. Uh, well, at, well, in fact, let me go back. Yeah, San Andreas. But I was actually thinking about, remember the Poseidon Adventure? Oh, sure. With Shelly Winters and all that. Oh, and yeah. then also um, the other one, the uh, with. Uh, you had the towering inferno. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and and the other one, the last one that I wanted to mention, the um, see the Poseidon Adventure, the the Titanic, twenty twelve, earthquake. They did. They had one in the seventies, I think it was earthquake, with a really bad earthquake that they keep telling us is going to hit California and destroy everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that all of these things, even though these other movies, like I just mentioned, with uh. The Poseidon Adventure, or the Titanic, or the Towering Firm. They're all this doom and gloom stuff, you know, where there's something catastrophic is going to happen. It went, but these were all before the World Trade Center. Yeah. All, all of those movies, that, like I just mentioned, were before, with the exception of 2012, before the World Trade Center. So the Towering Firm, that that one, <laughs> even though that tower didn't didn't come down in that movie, that it was on fire and it was already programming us for this kind of stuff and then of course we all remember then what was it in fight club the scene where the those two or one the building comes down when they're standing there looking at it yep uh infamous scene so they have been doing predictive programming in these movies uh all along and just like they have for this scam nimic so you know uh yep. but there's a lot of movies they uh they did they did escape from L.A. after they did New York. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, there's there's so many. Yeah. There. What was the year? It was that 1974 was the Tower Inferno. Then they've had where the volcanoes are going to erupt and uh, you know, just kill everybody <laughs> or or kill a bunch of people. Um, another interesting thing that I think we might save as a topic uh, for another time was this concept, and then we're going to go to break, the concept of, now y'all might like this one. Okay, if you remember when, the, during the flood, God destroyed uh, everything, I'm paraphrasing, that said it had breath in its nostrils kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But have you ever heard of people, and I have, people who get involved in spiritual warfare, talk about marine spirits? Uh, no. And, oh, yes, sir. They talk about marine spirits. And uh, I have had an experience with one that I think was a marine spirit where I got attacked in a, a hotel one time. So I'll table that for, for next week. But the concept of marine spirits where they were, I heard somebody say this and it clicked in my head. Something that was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. They were saying that, and this is a believer, that when the Lord sent the flood to get all these creatures that really, they were no longer human. Oh, if you really study it out, they had become something other, okay? Right. Which is what? What? The Omega Man, mm -hmm. all the stuff we're talking about, right? Uh, they became other. And... This is why the Lord's judgment fell on them. And one of the reasons we know that this is true is because how the Bible tells us Noah was perfect in his generations. It makes this point. 
to let us know that he was perfect. And this is referring, generation is the same word where you would get genealogy, where you get gene, which would lead to DNA. Okay, now that's a quick synopsis because we're, we're about to go to break. But uh, Marine Spirits, he was saying, this, this pastor I was listening to was saying that because they, remember it says they, that the fallen ones sinned against man, beast, and the fish. And, yeah. and, and he was saying that they were able to create with their seed corrupted sea life. And that when God <laughs> sent the flood, the only things that escaped that either didn't go underground, because a lot of people suspect that some of these beings were able to run underground and yep. avoid the flood, mm -hmm. and sea life, where they had corrupted that and it went into the ocean. And that some of them things out there that's in that ocean <laughs> ain't God's creation. Right. Now, that has something to <laughs> consider. Yeah. I'm dropping that on you. We're going to go to the break now, and everybody will take about five minutes, refresh, replenish your beverage, and we'll be back on the flip side to discuss with Sister Angel and Brother Cripps the flat earth. And Sister Angel wants to talk about, are you ready for this? Late at night, the ser serial killers and how there might be something more to that. that we Don't worry. I think you'll be less afraid after I talk about it than more. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. She's coming at it from another perspective that I think you guys will find interesting. And we'll be back right after this break. Thank you. 
Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus, thank you for joining us for the second half of this broadcast. I do believe my guests have made it back from their break. Sister Angel, are you there? Nope, not yet. Brother Cripps, are you there? I am here. Awesome. Okay, good. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and remaining with us for the second half of this broadcast. You're almost little past halfway there for your award that comes at the end of the broadcast. But those of you who have stayed tuned with us numerous times, you already know what that is, but I'm not going to say it right now because you got to earn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brother Chris, it was your idea because we got on fire talking about it a little bit last night on Fun Fellowship Fridays on Church of the Eternally Secure. And uh, I'll let you tell everybody what that topic is. Yeah. Now, uh, I already planned on doing this, so I, I just wanted I, I want to preface this by saying a couple of things. Mm. As we talk about this, I, I want to make this extremely clear to everyone. If you do not believe this, that's totally fine. We're not trying to. Uh, make you feel stupid or make you feel like, you know, we're awake and you're asleep and you're, you're just an idiot because you, you're, you don't believe this or anything like that. Um, this is a, a subject and it shouldn't. I don't think it should uh, cause people to be angry and, and fight with each other. And, uh, but for some reason, this particular topic, and I, I learned this early on, before I believed it, I just just brought up the subject. Now, you've heard me mention that before. Mm -hmm. I just asked people, I said, hey, I've been finding out uh, some of this about the flat earth and, and things like that. And anyone want to talk to me about that? And you would not believe the anger. It's like people are so indoctrinated against this that they're not even willing to discuss it. They're not willing to discuss it. They're not willing to even look into it. A lot of people aren't. Every person that has really honestly looked into it that I know has come to believe it, has come to understand, mm -hmm. especially believers uh, that go to the Bible. Now, there are plenty of people that believe it that, that aren't believers and they don't go to the Bible at all, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, they they just look at all the other information that's out there. So before we get started, I just want to to make it very very clear uh, because we believe this. We're not making fun of you. You're not nope. a moron. You're not an idiot. Right. There's nothing wrong with you. We all believe that what you believe uh, before uh, God opened our eyes to flat Earth. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, if anyone else wants to add to that comment before we get started, uh, I do. Okay. I want to second everything that you just said and just simply add that uh, we are just having a conversation uh, amongst friends. And it just happens to work out that all of us have come to believe in the flat earth. Now, if there was somebody on the panel that didn't and they wanted to argue for the ball earth, uh, we let them make their points and, and, and make their arguments. But there isn't. Uh, and I didn't pick people. I didn't go. Oh, I only want people who believe in the flat earth. In, ca- in fact, all of y'all can attest that I'm telling the absolute stop down righteous truth. I ain't mentioned nothing about flat earth when I either invited you to be guests or Brother Cripps. Brother Cripps reached out to me. He was like, I got it. He's like, I want in. So yeah. right. <laughs> he, he, he texted me, Lisa, I want in. So, uh, or, or no, we, I think it was after a hangout one night. So yeah. uh, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It wasn't even an issue. We didn't even really discuss it before. I didn't even know how they even felt about it before. We started uh, on the other broadcast talking about it. So, again, this is not to uh, offend anybody. We love you whether you believe in the ball earth or not. We don't think you're going to hell because you believe in the ball earth. None of that mess. So right. just be, just relax. You can sit there and think we're crazy all you want or nuts or whatever. Just We're just asking uh, consideration like you would somebody that you loved, even if you didn't dis- uh, didn't agree with them, the same level of courtesy and respect that you would show somebody that you respected that you disagreed with, okay? Sister Angel, do you have anything you'd like to add? Oh, can you hear me? Am I muted? Yes. No, you're good. Um, uh, well, no, I just second everything everybody said. Um, you know, just try to, try to uh, hear past uh, any uh, 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 mental blocks you might have uh, when we discuss this. It is not an attack on you or your worldview. Um, uh, all of us came from the same exact uh, mm-hmm. space that you're in, you know, the same headspace when it comes to this subject. And uh, if you're listening to this, you probably don't think we're complete idiots. Uh, uh, it'd be weird if you were still listening this late at night if you thought we were total idiots. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe consider that, that, that there <laughs> might be something that you're not seeing. Um, and uh, and understand, you know, it's just, uh, I think we can all agree that um, even if you don't believe that uh, that the Bible is being literal when it describes creation, I think we could agree that what well, you know that the, the cosmology that we're holding to in no way conflicts with uh, the biblical description of creation, and and, and rather upholds it uh, to be literally true. So it shouldn't feel like an attack on mm-hmm. anything foundational. Uh, mm-hmm. at all <laughs> and quite the contrary so um it, uh, and if it were true which which is <laughs> um it really should it would be you know uplifting and it, i know for me when i realized that it was that it was true at long last um it uh it it, it was actually very very comforting as much as it was terrifying prior to that but, and claustrophobic and just um really just uh something like a thing of nightmares you know honestly <laughs> uh, uh for me as an unbeliever uh when when i heard like the first uh somewhat valid arguments for this you know for this idea um which i totally rejected mind you but it was disturbing to me on a deep level how plausible the arguments were uh, as much as i wouldn't admit that um mm-hmm. once i became a believer uh and i revisited the subject it was um you know, not scary at all. And it shouldn't be scary. It shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't make you feel uh, negatively to imagine uh, that, you know, that perhaps the description in the Bible is literally true uh, of creation. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, that's about, that's about it. Okay. Okay. All right. Brother Cripps, take it away. Okay. So I'll start out by saying how I uh, uh, came into this. Um, I'm an actor and I'm a theater major. Uh, I've, I've, been a, an extra in uh, Talladega Nights and um, I've written plays mm. and directed and things like that. So at the time, I was uh, in a short film that was uh, submitted into one of the many film festivals that go on for short films out there. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I played a cable access uh, talk show host that deals with supernatural and uh, uh, kind of crazy things that happen. Um, uh, ghosts and, and things like that. And I talk about it on my channel. So now before this, I didn't even know that people believe this. Okay, so this was in 2017. Um, in fact, in 2017, I believe that that God, uh, that the Holy Spirit was uh, working in a way to bring a lot of people to the truth, uh, even unbelievers, to the truth about flat earth uh, mm-hmm. because of the upswell of um, the amount of people that, re- that, that looked into it on YouTube at the time and asking questions and discussions and things like that. Um, but anyway, I was playing this character and uh, they gave me a script. Of, you know, I was able to, you know, ad lib and things like that. But one of the things uh, that he, he said, yeah, talk, talk about uh, we're going to we're going to deal with flat and hollow earth. Um, so I, I said it. I said, you know, OK, so last week we talked about this and that. Next week, we're going to talk about. Uh, flat and hollow earth and what that means uh, for us and and see what your opinions are about that. And then we stopped shooting. And afterwards, the director, he's a younger guy than I was. And I said, what what is this flat, flat and hollow earth? I I mean, I had heard that uh, in ancient times, people all believed it was flat, but then they proved that that it was a globe. So I, I, I was aware of it. But I was not aware that people still believe it. And he said, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. there's people out there to believe uh, Flat Earth. And that, we left it there. I got home uh, late la- that night after shooting. We, we uh, shot some scenes at night outside and some things like that. And I got done. I got home about 11 o'clock. And I was I, I was I couldn't believe I couldn't believe that there were people out there in modern day times. Mm hmm that would still believe flat earth. So when I started looking at it, first of all, it was because I, 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 I couldn't believe people thought that. And I wanted to know why they thought that. It, mm-hmm. it was intriguing to me that in modern day times, with all the technology we have today, that anyone would still believe that with everything we know or think we know uh, 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 about science and the globe. Now, I'm not a huge science proponent. In other words, I don't believe in evolution as a believer. Um, I know that science lies about things because they've lied about evolution. So it's not a stretch for me to believe that the world is capable of lying about things. So just keep that in mind. But I started looking into it and one hour turned into two hours, two hours turned into three hours, three hours, four hours. I believe I, that first night I ended up uh, staying up to about four in the morning mm-hmm. and I there was so much in at the time. There was so much information available. Now there's way less information uh, now available out there because YouTube has decided to scrub all the videos, the numerous, numerous videos. Some of them you can't even find anymore out there mm-hmm. because of YouTube. YouTube uh, doesn't want people to know about this or think about it. If it was just some ridiculous thing that some people believed, why would they have any need to? To scrub it. To do that, yeah. Right. There would be no need to do that. But so many people were researching it and 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 putting it in the search tab in YouTube in 2017 because it, I believe, it was the Holy Spirit. I really do. But I, I watched all the videos, and this was several days, even in, into weeks, that I looked into this uh, thing. I didn't just uh, hear about it that night and go and look and then say, oh, I believe it. No, this was research. Right research and right. looking at videos and listening to videos. And um, I, I tried talking to other people, but as I said at the beginning, uh, there wasn't anyone that any one of my friends or family that wanted to even have a discussion with me about it. In fact, I mm-hmm. lost friends. People unfriended me on Facebook because I was even looking into it. This is before I even believed it, but I, wow. but that was something that made me even more curious about it. I was like, why are people reacting like this? I'm just saying, let's have a conversation about the possibility that this might be true. So I watched, honestly, I watched a lot of the videos first and then I went to the Bible. Now, Mm -hmm. the the question would be, why, why is a believer not going to the Bible first? Well, one of the main reasons for me was that 
most believers in churches I'd attended my whole life had just, uh, they don't agree with evolution, but they agree with the way science depicts the world that we live in, which is a globe. So there was no reason for me to look at the Bible, but it was mm -hmm. there the whole time. So yeah. when I went to the Bible and there were over 200 verses that, that not all of them are, it doesn't say, oh, the earth is flat. There's not one mm -hmm. single verse that says, the earth is flat, quote unquote. Right. Doesn't right. say that. But if, if you have a, a, a fairly commonsensical mind and you read the over 200 verses about this topic, there are verses of, about the earth not moving. There are verses about the dome, the firmament, uh, whole, uh, separating the water from the water. There are mm -hmm. verses about the the uh, order in which things were created, that light was created before the, the moon and the stars and, and the sun. Mm -hmm. God created light before those things even existed. And the mm -hmm. world, was, the, the earth was already here. Mm -hmm. So they say that we need the sun and we need the constellations and we need the moon in order for the earth to spin on its axis a certain way. And if it was even off one degree or the sun did this or did that, Mm -hmm. Then it would destroy everything. But the earth was here. It was formless and void. But it was here before there was any light. It was in total darkness. There was no sun, no moon, no stars. And God created it all. So it was not a stretch for me to go into the Bible and see what it said about it. Mm -hmm. So I started reading the scriptures. I looked up every single one of the 200 verses. Um, some of them that were a little more obscure than others. It's like, well, I don't know if that really says it's flat. It's just kind of, you know, but when looked at as a whole, mm -hmm. all the over 200 verses looked at as a whole, there is compelling information in God's word about the shape of the earth, about the fact that it does not move. It does not spin. It is stationary and it is the center, not the sun. The mm -hmm. sun is not the center. The earth is the center. God is above us on the firmament, which is solid. He's sitting above us. They make it seem like God's so far away. He's, oh, he's billions and billions of miles away, just like the sun is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And the moon is so far away, but yet they say that we've been there. And it, it makes God, it makes us seem like an insignificant thing that nobody would care about. We're just so insignificant and in this vast universe. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in reality, God created us for a purpose and he's above us mm -hmm. and he has a plan for us. He's not far away. He's within reach. And uh, we're, we're not, as science says, we're not made of stardust. And and we're not far. We're not far from God. Mm -hmm. So I'll start out like that. Uh, so that's how I that's how I got into it. I explained how uh, the question came up. Um, the Bible uh, did not go against everything that I had seen. It backed it up. And mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, in June of 2017 that I wrote in my notebook, they, I believed, the earth was flat. <laughs> uh, and uh, the other thing, and I'll just mention this really briefly. I want everyone to be able to make a comment, but... Uh, something spiritual happened to me during this whole process. Um, like Sister Lisa will talk about, one of the things when, when I was looking at this was why did they lie? Because in this whole process, I had to believe that if there's a firmament, we didn't go to the moon. If there's a firmament, aliens can't exist, which means they're, mm -hmm. they're natural beings. Uh, it also means that aliens didn't seed our planet somehow, uh, that God created it. Nothing, nothing's getting through there. And there's information that it's not even in the Bible. It's secular sources about uh, Operation uh, Paperclip, Operation Fishbowl, where they lob nukes up against the firmament, see if they can crack it. Um, there's plenty of, of non-biblical information out there, including watching videos of the actual space landing and looking at the information and the... Um, uh, not the space lab. What do they call that thing? That make believe uh, uh, space station. The space station. Mm -hmm. um, videos from the space station have glitches. They're using a green screen, 
And there's several videos that prove that. Right. You, you, you see little wires and, and impossible things and, and uh, uh, happening. The microphone's in his hand one minute and the next minute it's not. Um, there, a lot of the things that backed up this idea were glitches that are there if you only take a look. There, there's one shot, one video of them on a spacewalk, and there's an air bubble coming up as if in water. Mm -hmm. They're shooting some of this stuff in a pool in water. And there's there's information to to point that out. So there's oh another thing another really really big one uh, in the original uh, the the first Earth landing in 1969. The, right. They show the the capsule taking off from the moon. It's being filmed. So who's mm -hmm. filming it? Right. Who was there? Yeah. Only three astronauts. They're all they all came back. So they didn't set up some remote camera that followed them as they took off from the moon. The, and the landing. There's so there's several of them that are that when you realize it, when you see it, and then you look at all the stuff, you're like, well, of course. Of course it didn't happen. So uh, but I kind of got off track. What I was gonna say was when I started looking at all this, and the, and the question popped in my mind was okay, if this is true, the earth is flat and we didn't go to the moon, why? Why are they lying? What's mm -hmm. the purpose of them lying? And before I even looked at the message was to hide me. I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying to hide me from people. Well, that's what evolution does. Evolution tells us that we came from uh, microbials in, in the primordial ooze, and then they became fish, and then the fish grew legs, and and on and on and on until monkeys and then monkeys, our ancestors, and then we came from monkeys, blah, blah, blah. That's what they tell us. What that does, that hides the uh, the possibility of any God. We came from a big bang and their, and their storytelling came from a big bang. And I didn't, I didn't believe that at all. But the reason is because they don't want us to believe that there is a creator. Mm -hmm. So the reason was, is the same. Uh, they they tell us that it's globe earth because they created it they created this idea uh to to back up their evolution it's connected because if there is a firmament if god created everything and there's a firmament then the the big bang didn't create any life here it's impossible to create life if there's a dome all the the space particles and things that came together wouldn't be able to get through Right. So that means there has to be a crater. So when I started looking at this stuff, I found other things that continue to create a narrative that the God of this world, Satan, is way more evil than I ever considered him. And when I understood that, when I understood that there's nothing in this world that I can count on or believe, if they're mm -hmm. if they're lying to me uh, about the the space landing they're lying to me about the shape of the earth and the reason is to hide god and then on top of that they're committing all kinds of evil things in the name of their religion that they believe they they mm -hmm. they say god but it's not the god we worship it's the god of this earth is satan it's lucifer that's who they worship and in his name they have done all kinds of things and blamed on other people and one of those things was 911 one of those things was the the uh, the controlled demolition of the towers and blaming it on terrorists mm -hmm. and causing a war because of it. When that little piece fell into place, mm -hmm. the uh, the the feeling I had spiritually was amazing. I I fell in love with God all over again. I mean, I I've been a believer for a long time, um, but at that it, it just changed everything for me. And it made the Bible even more real than I first thought. I mean, I mm -hmm. always believed it, but looking in the scripture and looking in some verses that I had read hundreds and hundreds of times before and read the stories and seen all the words, mm -hmm. when he opened my eyes to this, it it just made me fall in love with him in a way that I, I and not a romantic love, just to make that clear, but just in love with my creator. And know that his, his is the only truth that I can cling to. Mm -hmm. and so when I discovered that, when I realized that, and the way that he revealed it to me at the time, 
it separated any love I have for this world in a way that I couldn't have uh, done on my own. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize that he's the only one I can trust. His word is the only thing I can trust. I can't trust anything from the world. And that was a mm -hmm. freedom that I could not have done on my own. I, I'm, I'm a slave in many ways. We're all slaves to, to this world while we live here, but we're free in our cages. If, if we <laughs> understand that the truth of God is real and that we cling to him, we believe in him, we trust in him and we don't trust anything from this world. That is a freedom, believe it or not. I know. So I'll let other people make a comment. That's, that's the, that's the prologue, so to speak of how I got into it and uh, some of the reasons why I believe it. Well, I want to interject a few scriptures to help support what you're saying that cool. uh, I'll just throw out five here mm -hmm. that, that why I believe the earth is not spinning according to the Bible. In first uh, Chronicles 1630, he has fixed the earth firm, immovable. Yeah. Psalm 93, one, thou hast fixed the earth immovable and firm psalm ninety six ten. he has fixed the earth firm immovable psalm 104 5 thou didst fix the earth on its foundation mm -hmm. so that it never can be shaken isaiah 45 18 who made the earth and fashioned it and himself fixed it fast so there you know these are examples like what, what brother uh, Cripps is talking about how the scripture and Sister Angel also referenced. She said it doesn't contradict the scripture to believe that we're on a flat so-called earth. Um, you know, for example, they don't call it a curve and they call it a horizon, things like that. But when I found out that um, they were lying, I actually don't even recall what the first thing was because there's so much crap they're lying about. That once I realized like one big giant lie, I was like, okay, well, look, you guys point to evolution, which is perfect example because people can't argue about that. Anybody that's a believer knows doggone well that not only is evolution complete blasphemy, but they know it's a lie. Anybody who's right thinking in their head, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, that just looks at how the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made that it cannot possibly be evolution. For example, I believe it's 13, yeah, 13 chemicals that must be in the eye present and in its proper balance for the eye to see. How does that happen from a primordial soup? Anybody that can understand how sophisticated the human body is, just looking at it, biology knows there's no way we oozed up out of a primordial soup. There's no way. And I don't care if they throw 10 gazillion years at it. Nothing, it, it can't, nothing can't, how does that go? Something can't come from nothing like, like that. And this is, this is what, because even the, see the creator used whatever it was when he created what he created. I mean, he formed man. He had to make the dirt first to make man. So, you know, and it's not a coinky dink. Don't believe me. Go look it up. That the properties that are in dirt and in so-called earth are <laughs> the same minerals and vitamins that you need to put back in your body so that your body will last as long as possible. Yeah. You know, magnesium, zinc, copper. Don't believe me. Do a little research. That's not coincidence. So, you know, it's things like that. Um even when your hair, when you if your hair gets burned or singed, you smell what you smell that that's that funny odor. That's sulfur. <laughs> sulfur yeah. comes from the earth. So, in fact, you can't live without it. And they don't ever talk about that, but you know that's another topic for a different day. So, this uh, this whole concept. When I started looking into it and I started watching documentaries like um, the one, there was a couple of them. I've only seen maybe two or three by Jaronism. Uh, he's not a believer, as far as I can surmise, but he's got some really great videos on this topic. And one was NASA going nowhere since 1958. Now, when I saw that one, and it, and he showed 
the green screens and the lights and the wires. Why would you? Okay, if you can see it and they did it and they've lied and they're busted lying, then you got to ask yourself, okay, why are they lying? Well, then obviously because they didn't do any of it. So we already know it was to hide God, like Brother Chris is saying. They don't want you to know the Bible is true. They want people looking to science, yep. which I personally believe is a play on the word seance because they consort with devils to come yeah. up with 98% of the mess they come up with. Yep. Um, now when they step to the podium and they say, so, see, this is how I knew. I ain't trying to be funny. I'm being 100% right now. When they step to the podium, I don't care which mayor, which governor. I don't care who they were. When they stepped to that podium and started telling us stuff about this virus, I said they're lying. You know how I know? Their lips are moving because that's what they do. And now look what's come. Look at all the stuff, y'all. I'm talking about from the very beginning. I knew they were lying. And I, because of who they are, because of who they related to, spiritual wickedness in high places. And so when I saw it, I said, Okay, they have an agenda. They're trying to spin everybody for us. Let's let's see where this thing is gonna go. Let's start praying because these devils are busy right now. So when we see this stuff happening, that ought to be the first thing you think. Okay, now what are they lying about? Same thing with the news. I got a meme. I haven't seen it yet tonight, but the the meme it, it says, um, let's "See newscaster or spellcaster," because. Yeah. That's what they're doing. They're casting spells. I mean, from even the the theme that they play when the broadcast is coming on, and all of them have their little theme music, okay? And that's to get you ready, right? <laughs> you know, almost like Pavlov's dog. They ring in the bell for you to come listen to their lies. And I have looked and I have seen, now that I know what to look for, and I've done some research on human behavior and what they call um, – what. The whole thing where they smile, oh, duping delight. So when they're standing there and they put these microphones in people's faces whose mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, husband just died. And they're smiling. And there's no tears. You know, I used to wonder when the Bible said that in the last days, one of the signs would be that they would be without natural affection. Now, I know. There are people that are doing evil and they have no conscience concerning that. It means that. But I think one of the little things, too was the fact that we would see people that didn't have natural affection to let us know they're lying because the stuff that they're saying happened didn't happen. There is no way on God's green earth that if somebody you love with all your heart was just killed horrifically, tragically, uh, in some uh, unexpected way, even if it was just an accident, that you wouldn't be torn up and grieved. You're not going to be out there within 24 hours 48 hours, 72 hours, a week, 10 days with a smile on your, I don't care what anybody says, with a smile on your face like it didn't happen and you're talking about a story like it's a script versus you just lost your loved one. You guys have to start paying attention to their affect. It's all off. You will be able to detect when they are lying Go look and research duping delight. Go research body language. And you can see these people are lying. Now, one of the things they've been doing lately because they're wearing these stupid masks is you can't see that they're smiling and lying. But if you look at their eyes, which the Bible tells us is the window to the soul, you can look and see that it's, it's still off. It's not right, y'all. You can tell it's off. I told you I was able to detect a few weeks ago that somebody was up to no good by the look in his eyes because he had one in masks on. And I said, that dude is up to no good. And he went in and he stole stuff out the store and ran out. I was like, I knew it. Because the Bible has given us the clues that we need if we will pay attention to it. It lets us know what to look for in these last days and in these end times. But I'm not going to carry on too much about uh, the flat earth because uh, I know I can look out and I see and I perceive that when I'm walking, we ain't on anything to spinning. Because I told y'all and I've said this before, 
I live out here in a state that they call shaky. California is one of the nicknames for it is shaky. And the reason is not just because of the people, because when the ground moves, stuff crumbles. Now, I just want you to think about that for a minute. If we were on a spinning ball, how come stuff ain't crumbling? Number one. Number two, I don't care what ball you pick. You pick any ball you want. Put water in it and spin it and see if that water stays in its place without splashing all over the place. Yep. And that's why I say there's no way we're on a spinning ball. And I'm gonna drop it right there. Sister Angel, are you still with um, us, honey? Yes. And so okay. we, we talk about evolution a lot when we bring this conversation up and like I don't know if people understand that um <laughs> the the entire cosmology that we're we're taught in school when it comes to um you know the solar system and you know gravitational spin and all of that stuff. It's all evolution. All of it is, it, it's all one big thing. It's not like mm-hmm. evolution's over here and then this idea of, um, 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 you know, billions and billions of light years and billions and billions of years and all that stuff, but it's somehow unrelated. They all work together. They need Excellent one another. Point. Excellent. And yeah, I mean, and, and, and it, they're inextricable from, from one another. The theory of accretion, which is what they claim is how is how um, planets are formed over billions and billions of years, um, uh, 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 with with all the spinning around each other, all of that. That's all needed to to, to, ju- to justify. Uh, they're all needed to justify one another, um, because they claim that dust. You know, the Big Bang happened, right? Um, and then um, all of this dust and all these particles over billions, trillions, and trillions. You know, they just get so ridiculous with the time spans. Um, uh, you know, that it's, it's just inconceivable and it really does, you know, in my mind, it, it, it makes everything meaningless the farther and farther apart you get, um, uh, right. which, you know, they also claim the universe is expanding um, infinitely right. into so the point angel. that, yeah, sorry. Let me stop you right there just real quick. Hold that thought. Okay. The, I want just for people who may not know, accretion, okay, in astrophysics is the accumulation of particles into a massive object by gravitationally attracting more matter, typically gaseous matter, in an accretion disk. Most astronomical objects such as galaxies, stars, and planets are formed by accretion processes, according to their theory. I'm sorry, I just wanted to add that in case people say, what is she saying? Yeah, yeah, that was was really good. Yeah, so that, that, um, you know, and I understand a lot of people believe that um, uh, like Christians will believe that no, 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 none of that stuff's true. It's just everything else that they tell us. So basically they don't believe in the big bang. They don't believe in billions and trillions of years, but they believe that the model they've presented us with uh, by which, you know, they, they explain this model of, uh, uh, by the way, they, they, you've never seen it with your own two eyes. You can't touch it, taste it can't verify it at all but they've given you this model and they've also told you that the way this model got here is through billions and billions trillions of years and accretion and the big mm-hmm. bang and it mm-hmm. does not make it's 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 not logically sound to take one and not the other you have just as much proof of the one as you do the other uh it, you didn't get it from god's word and I, I mean I'm, you didn't i i know that you you're gonna t- you're gonna try to force that you know square peg into a round hole somehow but it's not going to fit it doesn't work you did not get this cosmological idea that we're presented with uh by you know consensus reality mainstream science you didn't get it from the bible you have retro you've tried to like um what do they call it um retro engineer you've retro you tried to retro engineer uh 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 the you know uh, your idea of, of of you know the Bible somehow matching with this cosmological model, uh, be, you wouldn't have ever gotten to the point, you know, where you think that there's a solar system, you think that there's all these galaxies and black holes and all this stuff. You would never have gotten that from scripture. You're getting that entirely oh. from man. Yes. And you- <laughs> That's right. That's right. I mean, if you were to actually go back and read scripture um, and just blank your mind completely, 
of, of all your assumptions and everything that you've been told and all the attachments that we've formed to these things we've been told, which is really the big thing. You know, it's an innocent childlike thing, really, uh, mm -hmm. that we, we get attached to these ideas because uh, uh, they teach us to, to, to uh, be amazed at space. I mean, really, like when you, when, you know, as you get older, looking back at like, you know, the models of the of the universe and like of the solar system, the little, you know, model Jupiter and 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 like the, the idea of the moon landing, all that stuff, there's like an innocence attached to it because we wondered at it when we were children. And when people come at you with the flat earth idea, it's like you're taking that, you know, like you feel like it's something's being taken from you. Um, because mm -hmm. we've all watched the science channel and Discovery Channel and all those documentaries we used to kind of watch when we wanted to just not think about anything else. And we thought, well, we could at least, you know, even especially like for me, when I was, you know, if I was depressed or something, uh, I would watch, you know, Discovery Channel and watch stuff about space because I thought, well, at least I know that this is true. And, you know, it just sort of seemed it sort of seemed like it was clean and it wasn't attached to anything negative or it was it was just true and it was something you could be amazed at and we look at um and i understand people argue that this mm -hmm. idea this idea of cosmology the you know the consensus idea of cosmology uh that 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 will know that that's actually it testifies to the glory of god because of all the the billions and billions of light years and all of the galaxies and all the black holes and all the stars but i mean it, 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 i get you i guess you could you could claim pretty much anything, you know, I guess the bigger, it, the bigger it is, the more glorious God is. But, but mm -hmm. when you, <laughs> well, when you think about the fact that, that none of it came from his word mm -hmm. and, and you're actually, you're actually saying that if creation were as, as it is literally described in scripture, what would that make God smaller? No, see what it really does is it makes right. us smaller. <laughs> it makes man smaller because, but you know what, also sister, I yeah. think it makes us the focal point and it makes No, it us, does. Right. Yeah, it does. But in their mind at first, oh, really okay. what we're fighting with is mm -hmm. pride because we can't leave on a spaceship. We can't go to the moon. We can't go to Mars. All that oh, stuff yeah. that th there's a part right. of us that wants to believe that we can do those things. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a part of us that will feel trapped once we know that we're under this, this firmament. But that's that, and that that so it does. It puts us in our rightful place. But it also, uh, uh, if you think about it, what is really? Sp I, I understand people. Most people will not claim they think that there's that God created alien life that we just don't know about. You know, most people, biblical Christians will say, "No, we're the only ones." So, what was all the waste of creating all these? You know, they they if you believe that the stars. Uh, are, are like, you know, like our sun, you know, obviously there's different types of stars, but I mean, if you're believing in mainstream science, they're telling us all the time that they're finding other systems that are like, that are like earth. They're finding other stars that are like our sun. And why would God create those things for dead galaxies and, you know, dead solar systems? It doesn't make any sense. Um, it's, it, and also it doesn't, it, it really does detract from how special and how purposeful this creation is. But the, the biggest thing I want people to understand, uh, and I've talked about this before, people think, I know as an unbeliever, when you look at this, um, it's like, so it, it seems so silly. Like, oh yeah, of course the earth is flat. Now I know people will say, I can look up in the sky and I see everything else is, is uh, a sphere. Why would this be flat? I forget about the flat part, the flat part, you know, who knows, mm -hmm. like the actual overall creation, like when we talk about what we walk on, all I'm saying is that what we walk on is flat because doesn't that make sense? Why would God put us on a ball to walk on? Yeah. You know, <laughs> that, that right. these things are actually satanic inversion and you don't mm -hmm. realize it yep. um, because yes. God said, you know, God said fixed and movable. Satan says mm -hmm. spinning and not just spinning in one way, <laughs> spinning in like a whole bunch of different ways. But then you look up in the sky at night and it's the same all the time. We're supposed to be traveling through all the, right. you know, the cosmos right now. We, right. It never made sense to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How, how and a big, the big Dipper is always there where it's supposed yeah. to be. And, and there might be a few things like I've heard people point to like a couple different constellations or a couple different things that have changed. Well, I'm not, you know, if they're angels and all of that, 
you know, who, who knows what, what lights we're going to see there. There are lights in the sky there and they're given for signs and seasons. But the point is the vast majority of everything has stayed the same for all of history mm-hmm. that we know yep. of. And right. that's and that's how people would navigate by the stars, uh, yep. because they were where they were supposed to be. How is that possible? Right. If we're traveling through the cosmos, I mean, we're we're traveling through you know through the uh, through all of the universe, because it's not just our our Earth that's supposed to be spinning. We're supposed to our solar system's supposed to be spinning, and then the galaxy itself is supposed to be spinning around the most ungodly concept in the world, the, thing the black stop it. hole. You're making- you're making me dizzy from all the spinning. I well, guess what? That's what I want to touch on: spin programming. This yes. is one of the things they use with mind control. They they it's called spin programming, where they will actually spin the victim. Um, in in there, it's a form of torture that they use to disorient during uh, mind control yes. programming because they yes. know what it does to the human psyche. So what they do mm. is like a form of soft programming when they tell you that you're spinning. And you just don't realize it's gaslighting mm. you also on a yeah. very subconscious oh. level, right? Thank you because for you that. think you're still, but no, 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 you're actually spinning. This on, on a fundamental level, it tells us to distrust everything about yeah. our own senses because yeah. we can't know anything. We yeah. think we're on a flat surface. We're really on a, 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 a round surface. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we think that we're, we're that, that the earth is standing still. And that, and not, not only that it's, you know, not spinning, but that it's not spinning at like a billion miles an hour or whatever they say. I, mm-hmm. I think a lot of these equations work out to six, six, six. They do indeed. tell us something. Mm, oh, no, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. And that just tells us to, to distrust ourselves. But then also um, uh, it makes, if you believe in some sort of God who created this, this crazy like monstrosity that they describe to us, you know, with their science, um, uh, it makes God impersonable, impersonal and unknowable. Mm-hmm. And that's a Kabbalistic right. God, by the way. Carl the Sagan. Carl yes, Sagan. They, yeah, God is watching us from a distance kind of thing. He said, and, yeah. remember the song? Insignificant yeah. speck in an insignificant and, and, The right, devil and, is and a liar. we're not relatable. We can't relate can to I, God at all. Can I please, can I please quote scripture against that, Brother yes. Cripps? I know you were only quoting him. So you're. I know you're not in agreement with that, but that's what he no. said. Yeah, so um, in Hebrews, it says, what are, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him, you crowned him with glory and honor and you made him a little lower than the angels. So does that sound like a God that don't care nope. that he is my, it says he is mindful of us, but go ahead, go ahead. Sister Angel. Well, well, and it's also, okay. So we know we're created in his image. So yes. in our, so it, it, a lot of people think that somehow it's silly or it's, contr- you know, it's, it's trite to try it. Oh, well, just because it would make sense for us to, to like, say we're going to build a terrarium, right. Uh, or, you know, a little habitat for an animal that we have a little pet that we would do it on a flat surface, you know, just like we would build any project. We'd start on a flat workbench. Yeah. Um, oh, it's silly to think that God would be constrained to that, or that, that would make sense to God. No, it's not silly because we're made in his image. It makes sense to us because it makes sense to him yeah. to put us. It, this, this is a, a very crucial Amen. concept that I find so hard to, to verbalize, but it was something very like revolutionary when I, when I realized it, which was that, you know, when I, I used to think that, um, it was the biblical God, it, you know, was just ridiculous because, oh, they describe God in, in this way, the way that God relates to man and the things God cares about it. You know, why would God, you know, this, you know, grand, you know, supreme being, why would he be concerned with all these little silly human trivial things? And why would he, you know, speak and uh, relate to us in these human ways where where he uses our concepts and everything that well no they're not our concepts they're his concepts yes. all of creation is a shadow of higher things in the heavenly realm and yes. so when we say you know that um if the earth is actually flat and you know obviously a lot of the descriptions we talk about like the pillars like you know the foundations of the earth and it seems silly like oh right so god just uh what he like he built it like a house and it, there's you know is there some wood up there somewhere or there's some you know is there some you know uh, uh, trap doors or whatever that lets the you know lets <laughs> lets the water in for the flood well yeah but yeah. it's not he it's he's not copying us we are do, all of those things that are that are that are not foreign to us that are that 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 you know are relatable to us how we go about constructing things 
we got mm-hmm. that from him. That's mm-hmm. why it's like that. He doesn't have to be some alien god who 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 has to do everything. Where it might as well just be magic to us. It makes no sense. All these all this all these things about space and quasars, all these weird things, all these crazy concepts that they come up with to try to try to explain things that fundamentally don't make sense like how the water sticks to a spinning ball they come up with all these foreign things and it's just like when we imagine aliens right so if you when i was a kid you know try to imagine like alien uh solar systems or whatever and and I thought, well, I wonder if some of their planets are shaped like, you know, like an X or like a triangle, you know, like you think of all these goofy things that like, well, like maybe aliens are like this or that because they're different from us, right? But th- that's how they've trained us to kind of think about God. Like he's supposed to be that like foreign and co- almost counter to our own, uh, what, what would make sense to us, like like almost like a Lovecraftian God, like Lovecraft, H.P. Lovecraft, he wrote about um yeah, and the, the, yeah, their geometry, if you were to look at their, you know, the, the way that they would build their buildings, their geometry was so foreign that it would break the human mind and you'd be at the same forever. That's like, like almost how they they want us to think of God rather than, you know, it, it, of course it would make sense for him to make a, a flat enclosed basically terrarium mm-hmm. under a like a glass dome. Yeah. It, it's not because he's he's lowering himself to copy our you know our building techniques we we don't we didn't come up with those he created us <laughs> he he gave us all of that right so so um you know he told he, you know he told us how to you know build the temple and um, we were told that it was a shadow uh, so what you know obviously um th- these are all god's principles these are his precepts this is how he goes about making things so it shouldn't be that weird to us that that he would make the earth in this this way that seems too human. Like if we were going to build the earth, we would have to go and start about it with a hammer and some nails and lay in some concrete. None of that is our idea. All of those things God made. God made all of that right. stuff. All the stuff we use to build, all the ways we go about building. Oh, I don't even know how to word it, but that was all. God made all of that. We didn't come up with anything. We came up with nothing. No ideas of our, like we, he, he, he created all that is in existence, including our thoughts. I can or the stuff of our thoughts. I can back you know? up the scripture. Yes, please do. Job 38. This is this is one of the chapters that helped me uh, come over uh, the edge of mm-hmm. having been indoctrinated and looking at the Bible uh, for the truth that he has nestled in there for us if we were just look. Mm-hmm. So this... This is the part of Job. Job has asked, in the previous verse, he's asked him some questions. And then uh, here's God's answer to Job's questions, starting at verse one. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Mm. Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me mm-hmm. if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or Mm -hmm. who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band. When I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, when I said this far, you may come, but no farther Hmm. And here, your proud waves must stop. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused Hmm. the dawn to know its place that it might make hold, take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. It takes on form like clay under a seal and stands out like a garment. Uh, Yeah, garment. From the wicked, their light is withheld and the upraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the gates of death been revealed to you or have you seen the doors or the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know all that. Uh, there is the way to the dwelling of light. Uh, where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where it's this place that you may take it 
to its territory that you may know the paths to its home. Do you know it because you were born then or because the number of your days is great? Have you entered the treasury of snow or have you seen the treasury of hail, mm -hmm. which I have reserved for the time of trouble for the day of battle and war? By what is light diffused or the east wind scattered over the earth? Who has divided a channel for the overflowing water or a path for the thunderbolt to cause it to rain on land where there is no one, a wilderness in which there is no man, to satisfy the desolate waste and cause to spring forth the growth of tender grass? Has the rain a father or who has begotten drops of dew from whose womb comes the ice? and the frost of heaven who gives it birth. The waters harden like stone and the surface of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades or loose the belt of Orion? Can you bring mm -hmm. out Mazareth in its season or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you set their dominion over the earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds? that an abundance of water may cover you? Can you send out lightnings that they mm. may go and say to you, here are we? Who has put wisdom in the mind? Who has given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds by wisdom? Or who can pour out the bottles of heaven when the dust hardens in clumps and the clouds cling together? Can you hunt the prey for lions or satisfy the appetite of young lions? When they crouch in their dens or lurk in their lairs to lie in wait, who provides food for the raven when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? Wow. Almost Thank every bit Lord. of that Satan tries to contradict in some way. Like, oh, well, there is no treasury of snow. You know, like like all all these, all, all so much of how God describes creation, if you notice in the in the way that we're told the earth works is it's like it's, it's blatantly contradicted they because he'll always do that he'll do the opposite the opposite of what god says you know and um uh i i just i don't understand how i really don't understand how somebody can hear the words you know let god be true and every man a liar and they still walk away thinking that it makes more sense to believe in the version of creation that science man man himself mm -hmm. has presented to us as opposed to God's literal word. I mean, you right. really can't say, cause if you can't say you're, you're, you're honestly doing that because you mm -hmm. did not get black holes and galaxies from God's word. No, no, nope. you didn't get that nope. from his nope. word. You got that from man. You didn't so get space. Space. No. Yes. No. yes. No, that's right. You did not get that space concept from God. Yeah, we're yeah, the Bible by says, uh, for example, it says, "By him the worlds were framed." Right. So, uh, a lot of people have come to understand that that is not talking about planets; it's talking about dimensions. Uh, that's mm -hmm. one perspective on that. What worlds mean? Because it, I, I, I have said this <laughs> before. I really put that concept together with with them saying that. Um, that that the worlds are dimensions because I have said that the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, I, I said if I had to rename it and call it something else, I'd call it when worlds collide yeah. <laughs> because right. Jesus is going to step forth from eternity into the present. But go ahead, Sister Angel. Well, and then, Sister Angel, um, when you yes. when you when you finish your point here, Sister, so we can move yes. on and go on yeah. to your serial killer, so Brother Cripps can chime yes. in on that before he has to leave i just want to respond to one thing about the worlds. we should look at the definition of like the how that word what the word was like in the greek or you know in the hebrew and see exactly what the context was you know but um uh, but i agree it certainly doesn't have to mean other planets um i wouldn't even argue that dead planets that have no life in them or, or nothing at all are just void. i wouldn't argue that they are worlds you know, that's not my what how I understand the word worlds. It, you know, in the context of it in the Bible, it's it's it, it you know consists of something way more complex than just like a rock floating in space. But think about it. You know, we know God is supposed to be like like outside of of this creation, like that he is he's you know he's up there. He look, once we get out of out of this realm, you know, we're in God's realm. But what do they tell mm -hmm. us? They tell us that there's nothing but an infinite um, black right. void that's so mm -hmm. cold 
and so hot at the same time. I mean, all this crazy stuff. It's totally inhospitable. You'll die, you know, if you know it, the, the minute you you know fall out of a spaceship. And um, it's absolutely opposite to you know to to what the Bible tells us. It mm -hmm. you know, and it's 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 evil, and it's all it's it's very. I mean, I, it's very depressing. I mean, especially if you're an unbeliever. You know, as an unbeliever, you know, th there's this constant oppressive knowledge, even if you're, you're not conscious of it, that um, that you're on this lonely rock and that um, if you were to accidentally, I do just have nightmares, but accidentally getting on a spaceship, falling asleep and then, you know, finding myself up in space on this spaceship in this cold, horrible uh, uh, void. That was that was death to me, you know. If, if anything happened in this little vessel, and um, and just knowing that that's what surrounds us, it's like having death just looming all around you, yeah. you know. Like I, I don't know how else to describe it, but if you really break it down, but the most important thing, guys, is that you know, if you just abandon your assumptions and look at the Bible again, and just and be honest. I mean, be honest with yourself. You don't have to tell anybody else. You don't have to tell anyone else. Anyone you're afraid of how they'll react if they find out that you're, you, you think the earth is flat, if you're afraid that maybe that they'll stop believing, you know, in Jesus even, because they'll be so mad that, that, that you've come to this conclusion that they'll bucket, you know, like your children or something. Don't tell a soul, just but be honest and look at it and ask yourself how you would get to, 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 to this, this, you know, modern idea of cosmology from scripture and scripture alone, letting God be true and every man a liar. That means everything that you've ever heard from man alone, you have to just, just nullify it. Just totally take it out of your mind, call it a lie and look at scripture and then tell me how you get there. You just can't, you can't, I tried, I did, I tried, but anyway, so, um, I, I'm ready to go on to the next subject whenever you guys are. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we can always pick up on flat Earth some more next week because it is such a vast topic, and I think there's so many things that point to. I won't. I won't go as far as saying like debunk it because you know there's arguments to be made on both sides. But I think there's so many things that point to the fact that not only first of all they're completely contradicting the scripture. That is clearly evident, as Brother Cripps just read a beautiful passage that just it lays to if we were going down a checklist and 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 saying, well, look, what about this and what about this, what about this, right there in Job, where it is God speaking and declaring these things about His creation mm -hmm. that are in direct contradiction to what they've told us and taught us in those science seance books. But anyway, yeah. go ahead, Brother Cripps, finish your point, and we're going to move on to. Yeah, all I'm going to say is that 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 chapter says to us and to Job, you weren't there. You do not know the breadth of the earth. You do not know where the foundations of the cornerstone is laid. You weren't there. Only God was there. I don't believe that we have the correct measurements and uh, the dimensions no. of the earth that we live mm -hmm. on. Yeah, when, I don't they think so about, when they describe the center of the earth and the core and all that stuff that they describe, they mm -hmm. say that you can't get past a certain amount of miles. How do you know what the core is then? <laughs> exactly. How do you determine whether you can't see through the ground? Well, and what's the, and what's the cornerstone? Well, some people like say, well, that's the core. Okay, then what's the foundation? Yeah, where's mm -hmm. the foundation? Yeah, it's, like right. again, you might, they, they might try to claim the core, but the core only works for one or the other. There's a foundation and there's a cornerstone, which went, you know, so what, 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 where is that? Is God just making stuff up? Angel, your point was really, really good about yes. saying that God created the earth. You know, it makes sense if you're going to do a project to do it on a flat surface. It makes sense the way God created this. He didn't create it, uh, create us on a ball. He created us on a flat surface because it made sense to him. Now, mm -hmm. could God does I have the does God have the power to create the world yeah. like man says uh he did? Well, sure, yeah, but he didn't. He created yeah. what the word says. And when yeah. you read mm -hmm. verses in scripture that say they'll collect us from the four corners of the earth, there's there's more than one spot that talk about the earth having corners. A ball does not have corners. And they say, Oh, that's just po that's just poetic. Why would How God much is poetic? be poetic? Yeah, talking about the way that the earth is shaped. Why would that be poetry? Exactly. No, yeah. many things in the Bible that people think are poetry and they're actually literal. Yes, there are some things that are poetry. I would have gathered you under my wings. 
you know, that yes, that's alliteration. That's that's not he doesn't have wings that, that he would cover the Israel, uh, Hebrew people up under if they would just turn to him. That's an alliteration. But a lot of the Bible is is God telling us uh, uh, accurate things. And we, we would talk that way. We would we, we would tell, like, you know, if we were talking to someone, we, we would say, oh, I want to gather you under my wings. I mean, we would use that kind of language. But if we were trying to tell somebody how we made the earth, right? like, we, we, what, why would we wouldn't think to, like, use poetic language? They only bring up the poetic stuff when it conflicts with something man has told them. Exactly. Really. Like, that, that's the only time they have to spiritualize things is when, well, no, but that can't be because the, this guy told me this. And, yeah. um, and the, the thing about, um, you know, uh, God, yes, God could create the world in this totally counterintuitive, counterintuitive, bizarre way. Yes, he could have done it. He's yeah, God, he, he can do whatever. He but why would you decide he did it that way instead of the way he said he did it? I, right. He doesn't, the <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's a perfect place to end. Yeah. Right yes. there on this topic. We can pick it up at another time. Yep. Uh, there's so many wonderful angles we could come at. No pun intended when it comes to talking mm-hmm. about the flat earth. All right, Sister Angel. Now you want to talk about <laughs> you want to talk I was about get serial pictures. <laughs> I didn't go with pictures because I there really wasn't oh I could have showed you pictures of the serial killers, but other than that, it would just have been pretty gruesome. Uh so I'm not I just decided, nah, pictures not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. The, but uh, if you Google pictures associated with a serial killer's name, you're either gonna get uh, the picture of the serial killer or something really not uh, fun to look at. So um I want to talk about um well it's it's basically based on Dave McGowan's work. He's a, a really wonderful author, researcher. Um, Patriot, uh, he, he, well, he not so surprisingly died of an incredibly fast acting cancer um, a, a couple years ago. He was dead in like under six months. I mean, it was crazy. Like he was a young, healthy man and um, he got one of these, uh, these special CIA cancers and uh, he died. Oh, yeah. If you look at, if you look at his work, you'll see why he got that cancer. Mm. Um because he, he, he was, he was, uh, he was the real deal. He wasn't one of these people on YouTube, these grifter truthers who are probably hired to, 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 to give you so-called truth, you know, a great deal of them. Um, he, he was the real deal. He did his own research. He wrote an incredible amount of, of, of books that almost, you know, all of the truth community so-called nowadays, it really is based off of his work now. Um, mm-hmm. And um, uh, he, uh, he wrote a book called Program to Kill. Um, he also wrote um, Weird Scenes in the Canyon. It was about Laurel Canyon and about basically how um, all of the, the 60s counterculture yes. icons that yeah. they were mm-hmm. all which is the military brats, including, yep. you know, uh, Jim Jim Morrison. His dad was the, the what, what do they call the commander? What, what who's the, Whoever uh, in the Navy, they have the, the person that can, you know, the, the captain of the yeah. ship, there's the yeah. admiral. He was, yeah, for the ship that got off the Tonkin incident, which is like officially admitted to be a false flag. And Jim Morrison was his son, but he never thought to mention that when he was leading the anti-war protest that they're all, it's all, it was all fabricated. It was all just like astroturf. That's why they, it all came out of nowhere. It's very fascinating. And then he started to look into serial killers because re- doing that research, he um, he learned about the Phoenix program and, um, a lot of people probably haven't heard of the Phoenix program or at least all of the details, but you know how in, you know, when Vietnam vets, like even in movies, uh, that there's a lot of, uh, you know, allusions to, uh, this idea that the vets in Vietnam, they did really horrible things mm-hmm. and like, they have to get over like these awful things they did and like, including like, like rape and all of this stuff. And it's specifically with Vietnam, we see that, you know, portrayed to us in the media we don't really see that about you know other wars i mean right. obviously it happens in all wars but they always kind of hint at that in the vietnam war well that's because of the phoenix program now this was um um a psychological warfare tactic they used to neutralize the local population in vietnam um and uh it they would take you know, certain uh, soldiers that fit a certain profile, basically being a bit sociopathic um, and or programmable. Um, and they uh, they would have they would train them to 
terrorize the local population and and, and they did a lot of a lot of different things but see the, the key part of the phoenix program that i'm it, in terms of what i'm talking about tonight with serial killers is they would um they would i don't know how familiar everybody is with you know serial killers and and the, the mo that you know became like kind of the the uh almost a cliche, like, you know, like on, on criminal minds or whatever, how you're going to find a body, what they're going to do to the victim. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, the Phoenix program originated all of that. Um, we didn't see that really in uh, pop culture very often, aside from, you know, Jack the Ripper. Um, I mean, it was, you know, uh, you know, in the uh, 20th century, I'm not saying that, 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 that none of it predated the Vietnam War. Absolutely. It did. But, um, uh, one of the things they would do in Vietnam is they would uh, uh, kill uh, villagers, um, you know, like in their homes or, or, you know, wherever, but they would pose the body. So they would, they would, you know, um, either rape the victims or just mutilate and torture the victims and then make sure that the bodies were left where somebody would find them and they would be horrified, which is, you know, like usually posed in some grotesque, vulgar way. Um, this was a big thing that they did in the Phoenix program. And then lo and behold, after that, like how many serial killers came out after the Vietnam War where that was, that was, I mean, it got to the point where it was a total cliche where they would find, you know, the body of a woman in the park and she'd be posed in some obscene way and, you know, totally like, you know, terribly mutilated and all of that. Um, this was a, a Phoenix program tactic. Now, here's the thing. That's not the only thread that links serial killers in the Phoenix program. Um, mm. They, uh, a great deal of the serial killers, uh, uh, most of them, most of the ones that we've heard of were actually in the military. And if they weren't in the military, their parents were, but most of them are actually in the military, um, you know, including uh, like Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, uh, he's one that is, you know, uh, a, a really good example. But the, the thing, the theory, the overarching theory with a program to kill, and, I, and I've come to definitely believe it, and one of the really good uh, resources for um, some of this information, aside from like countless videos that you can find online, um, if you just, you know, look up Dave McGowan, Program to Kill Serial Killers, um, is a, a, a website called cavdef.org, C-A-V-D-E-F.org. I'll uh, have them put it in the, uh, in the links in the description after the show but it has like a whole wiki on like all types of per pertinent details um about the theory that i'm about to lay out so um basically what dave mcgowan came to realize was that the serial killer uh mythos that evolved which by the way it's sort of fallen off hasn't it it's weird all these serial killings were happening you know uh you know over the you know, past century but especially you know from the 50s onward we, you know, from the 50s to like the early 90s, you know, late 80s, we had like this, it was a huge trend to be a serial killer. And then suddenly uh, that just kind of fell off. It kind of went out of fashion to where we're almost nostalgic about serial killers. I know that I was as a kid, um, yeah. I had, you know, morbid curiosity. And I, I actually, once I changed majors in, in, in college from, you know, microbiology uh, to um, uh, criminal, uh, criminal psychology, uh, forensic psychology, you know, it was because of this morbid, you know, fascination with serial killers, but it was something that it was like, I wondered if I'd ever really get to work on the real deal, because it seemed like they were just uh, an endangered species, you know, you just weren't hearing about them very often. Uh, not that they don't exist, but it's like, they weren't the sensational classic serial killer that I heard of, you know, growing up, the Ted Bundy, the Dahmer, the, the, um, I think Dahmer was one of the last ones, like, um, the last iconic serial killers because uh, I know that his trial was going on when I was little and like I was about six or something. I'll never forget it. But um, uh, this is because suddenly they decided to move into the mass shooter, the, uh, the school shooter uh, that, the, the, you know, this is the next phase of their program because it's a Phoenix, it's a domestic Phoenix program. Serial killers mm -hmm. were um, designed, you know, the, the whole idea was dreamt up to uh, make us fear because it was, you know, in, in Vietnam, it was designed to, to neutralize the population. Because if you think about it, you know, it's obviously terrifying anyway, just to have an occupying force, you know, for like, a, like a, a foreign nation come in, you know, their military come into your land, even if they're not necessarily fighting you, you know, I mean, obviously, they were at war with the Vietnamese, but then there would be some, um, you know, uh, the, uh, 
villages that they'd be in that were friendly. Um, but either way, you, you need to kind of control the population. You need to make sure you don't have to worry about insurgents. Um, you know, like obviously in Iraq and um, uh, Afghanistan, we had that constant problem of, you know, uh, uh, of, you know, in, you know, IEDs and um, insurgent attacks and all that. They didn't really take kindly to the occupying force being just, you know, posted up in their land. But in Vietnam, they tried out this, and I'm sure they did this in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan also, but um, they decided to terrorize the population so much they were, they were paralyzed. Because if, if you think that not only is there this foreign force, you know, this foreign military in your land and, you know, even at war with your people, but, you know, once you take over a village, um, you don't want them causing trouble. Um, and you need to somehow terrify them to the point that they just don't, they just don't, they, they just feel helpless. And the way you do that is by, uh, with these brutal dis displays of, a so you, obviously they could have done it to the whole village, but then we would have gotten a, a, a reputation and like charged with all these war crimes as a country. So they had to do it on a, on a small scale where they did just enough. They, they littered these incidents throughout the community to where, you know, it wouldn't necessarily get international attention and get us in trouble because it wasn't like our standard policy and how we treated the locals, but the locals would know about it. The locals would know these horrific things that were being done and they would be terrified to do anything. Um, because all you're trying to do is survive if, if an occupying force is, 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 is in your, is in your, you know, is in your town. Right. Um, and then you see that the, like these women and children and just anybody, they're getting, uh, you know, brutally killed and tortured and mutilated, um, not by just the entire, uh, military that's there, but, but, you know, on an individual basis. And it just, that, that was, that was what was, um, intended, but with it domestically, the, the point was to make us, uh, fear one another mm -hmm. obviously we're at a point now and then there's a lot more to it than this but um uh one of the things was to make us uh fear one another uh our society has totally changed as a result of this you know uh several decades of serial killers being all over the news um mm -hmm. you know children aren't allowed to just run around by themselves anymore you know you mm -hmm. don't trust your neighbor you're more afraid of like I always tell people that I'm not afraid of the average stranger, uh, you know, because I know better now. I'm not afraid of the average stranger out in my community. Uh, I would be mm -hmm. more afraid in a really rich neighborhood than I would in a, a poor neighborhood because I know mm -hmm. what the really rich people are up to because they're mm -hmm. behind a lot of this stuff. And, um, um, you know, the trafficking and all of that. But they wanted us to see it the opposite way. Now, mm -hmm. um, a, a great deal of these um, these killings were, were actually – um, like assassinations, like like basically hit jobs that were that were disguised as just random serial killings, and a lot of it had to do with um, black market activity and um, child trafficking um, and just uh, sex trafficking in general. Um, uh, this was how they could go about having a very large scale trafficking operation. You know, even in the U.S., where children would go missing, uh, and not not just trafficking, but satanic ritual abuse, um, trafficking for the purpose of satanic ritual abuse and sacrifice. Um, they, Organ they harvesting. Yes, yes. All of this, they told us that, well, the thing is, is it's not connected. There's no conspiracy. There's just these random, crazy people that are like monsters. They're basically just like monsters. And they all, for some reason, all these unconnected white males, they just happen to get, you know, have the same penchant for, you know, uh, uh, you know, torture and mutilation and all of these, all of these things are actually uh, satanic, you know, ritual abuse and, and sacrifice, uh, uh, you know, they're hallmarks of, of what we would think of in a satanic a ritual murder. But, um, but they've told right. us, no, 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 it has nothing to do with that. Even though Jeffrey Dahmer had like a shrine, he, you know, like I say, he was definitely an occultist. He had like a, a shrine of, of skulls in, in his, in his apartment and, and a great deal. Like if not most of these serial killers, if you look in deeper, they were actually known Satanists. They were associated with Satanists. This is not mm -hmm. um, just like rumor of, uh, you know, the son of Sam uh, was, was Richard Ramirez. And those were the ones that yes. were overt. Yeah. Those were the ones that they said it uh, out openly, but m most of them, like um, but, like Henry Can I Lee stop Lucas? you here for a second? The reason no, I want to stop you is because uh, Brother Cripps, you just mentioned Richard 
Ramirez. Now I'm out here on yes. the West Coast, and that was a big deal out here in California. Yeah. Uh, because he was called, and, and this is one of the tricks. Nice when you see names, right? When you see names, like they give them nicknames, they <laughs> the Night Stark. Where did that come from? You know, the media. Yeah. So yeah. how come? Why would you give? Okay, when they show you, like, if you watched Criminal Minds, which they were getting into the minds of so-called serial killers and telling you one of the things that they want is to they be profile them. Well, yes, <laughs> and they want they want that notoriety in the media and stuff. So then, one of the things they won't do is feed that because it will encourage them to continue and stuff like that. Okay, so then, yeah, if if, right. if you even go with that, if you buy that as 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 a uh, correct analogy of so-called serial killers. Why would you do that as the media? Why wouldn't right. law enforcement step in and say, don't do that? Don't give them nickname. But yet they yeah. promote it and they put it out there. And I'm t- I want to tell y'all something. She's not lying when she talks about how it caused society to adjust their behavior. Because even in uh, Watts, people would still sleep with their doors unlocked and windows open. And mm-hmm. when that crap happened... People were locking their doors and closing their people were terrified of and each see, other. Yes. Not well, of other, the other, some outside power, maybe powerful people, not of a group, but of just each other. They just you never yeah. know. No, but Who's they were the terrified raging monster. Of this, this dude coming through the window. And yep. it was like they made him superhuman. For no like he reason. was just flying in people's houses and killing yeah. all, you know, whole families and stuff, and then flying somewhere else untraced and stuff. And it really right. did, guys. It ter- right. I remember Bundy. it because I was oh, out I here. California is the, ma- is the that's the other thing. It was almost always in California or Washington State. Mm. I mean, we have other serial killers, but you guys were the the the, the mecca for serial killers. I mean, I remember being bummed. Like, well, I don't live in California, so my odds of ever seeing a serial killer are really low. I mean, we have a few. Bundy came out <laughs> to Florida and killed, like, one person. But see, all of these things where they're killing, like, 30, 40 people. Bundy escaped from prison mm-hmm. and and, mm-hmm. and somehow got across the country and killed another. I mean, all this stuff, it, it's not, uh, if you think about it, it's really not plausible. But the other thing is, is that there's no motive other than that they just have this bloodlust. This is what they like to do. They just get down like that. In the past, we would have thought, well, w- well, what's going on? All of these crimes really seem very similar. You know, all mm-hmm. of this, this rape and torture and murder and these weird occultic seeming things, occult adjacent, you know, uh, uh, coincidences that, you know, you'll, you'll see like just little uh, calling cards uh, associated with the crime scene. And um, and yet we're told that no, totally unconnected, no conspiracy, no, nothing to see here. There's just all these maniacs all of a sudden, right? And they all just this is what they like to do. This is their this is their fetish, and um, and there's no mo. And that makes you feel terrified because you have no idea. And they always made sure to tell you he seemed like such a normal guy. He was have, such a nice guy. Can you know? I ask to you make guys, you have fear you- of your pe- your na- people you know because that way you think there's no way I would be able to suspect somebody with a serial killer, you know? They all mm-hmm. seem like nice guys to everybody. So, go on, Sis- Sister Angel. Let me ask you a question, or Brother Cripps too. You you might have an answer for this. Have you ever met someone that you knew was a killer? No, that wasn't a trick question. Oh no, I no. I did. I did, and I'll explain that in a second. How yeah. about you, Sister Angel? Did you have you ever I'm trying to see? L- let me tell you my story while you're yeah, thinking. tell your story. I was in Missouri, and I was traveling, and I had stopped in to get a beverage. And uh, in Missouri, they have what's called dry parishes, so you can't yeah. like out here in California. If you wanted to buy, um a beer or a wine cooler, you could just buy it single. Well, in Missouri, in these dry parishes, you can't do that. You have to buy a whole uh, case or six pack. And I went into this and it's really weird because in the store, there was no like, uh, you know how you go into a convenience store and they have chips and potatoes, nothing like that. It was just the beverages that were alcoholic or maybe some sodas. And they were just in a in a um, the the coolers. Now I don't know if that's the way it was because I only went into one when I was in Missouri one time that that to, you know to try to get some. And they had the the um those upright 
a glass through the door. You could see what it was, but everything was in six packs or cases. So when I walked in, this gentleman came from behind the, the um, well, well, back room and he came out. He was a Caucasian gentleman. Uh, he had one of those lighters where he lit the cigarette um, that he had. He flipped it open. You know how they can flip it and just at the same time, like I've never been able to do that, seen anybody could do it, that knew anybody could even do that. But he flipped it and he lit his cigarette and he was talking to me very nice. I, I wasn't afraid. We started talking and I perceived because he started, there was, they had some, he had a television on up high that was talking about some war we were going through at the time. Uh, and this was many, many years ago. And he said, uh, all of that's bullshit. This is his language. He said, all of that's bullshit. And he started telling me about his experience in the military and all that. And I believe if you, if I remember correctly, he was, he said he was a sergeant in one of the branches. I believe it was Marines. And, uh, I, I knew he was a killer because he had been in the military and he had killed multiple people in battle and he was talking and, and I'm telling you, there is a different, um, there's people who've been traumatized by the killing they've done. And then there are people that are hardened by the killing they've done. And I could tell that he was the latter. I wasn't afraid, but I knew he was a killer. And we, we, talked a little bit more and I exchanged um, you know, my pleasantries and, and said goodbye. I wasn't trying to get away from him because I was scared, scared. I wasn't. But uh, that was the first time I had perceived that you could tell the difference between somebody who was a killer and somebody who was not. And that's uh -huh. interesting because uh, I wanted to point that out because the so-called, now this is the other thing that lets me know a lot of this junk they've showed us is absolute garbage because they don't let you go into prisons with cameras and interview people who actually kill people. But they, they, they do that for TV with all these characters that they have put in front of us. Am I saying there are absolutely no kill serial killers? No, I'm saying they probably never even caught one of them because, <laughs> because of uh, how difficult it would actually be. Um, and, 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 and anybody who's really smart that was doing killing wouldn't do it in a way that would even draw attention to themselves. Right. And I'm going to say this one thing and I'm going to let you guys continue. One, Jason, one I want movie Jason to go. <laughs> I, I saw about a serial killer in the movie was somebody who was running around killing people with their car. And they would just hit them and drive off and go to the next state. And I was thinking in my head, I said, well, sh if you were going to be one, that would be the way to do it. Because you're, first of all, you're, they've always said in all these different things when they're investigating stuff that people who leave the scene or take the body somewhere else from where uh, it was killed, they, it's, it's, it's almost impossible for them to even catch people like that. They'd have to like drop their driver's license or have a fingerprint actually somewhere. And then even if they have a fingerprint, they would have to be able to run it. And the person's in the system for them to even match it. So when you start extrapolating these things, you would see that in real life, it would be extremely difficult. But I think, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, based on my perception, that a person to, to be a killer with the exception of anger that turns into rage. And I believe that's a demon that jumps on people and, and they do, and they, it, and it through the heat of passion or whatever, kill somebody with those, with the exception of that, that's not a serial killer. That's murder that comes from, from uh, flare ups and temper. That's why the Bible says, be angry and sin not. You have to be careful not to let your temper get away from you, but that serial killers are actually, they have to be demon possessed that is somebody that is possessed and went over to the dark side that's not just oh somebody uh grew up and they were abused and all that there's a barrier that the lord has placed that i have perceived that makes it difficult for people to just to cross over to become what they call serial killers now it's not impossible they do exist i'm sure but it's not what we've been told because you have to be sold out to the dark side to commit murder. I've heard people talk about how when they did, if they did commit a murder, uh, 
and, and this was people through their own testimonies who didn't even disclose who they were and, 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 and stuff like that, that said when they went to try to do a killing as a so-called assassin, they either had to be high out of their mind on something or ginned up through some type of rituals to do it. They mm -hmm. couldn't just go kill somebody. But I'm going to leave that right there. You guys go ahead. Brother, We're getting uh, close to Jason's time. Yeah, so I wanted Jason to, to, to say what he uh, had to say about this whole thing because he knows about it. Oh well, I don't. I, don't, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know what you what you're saying, Angel. I I did. Uh, the guy that you're talking about, some of the stuff. Um, I don't, I didn't read the whole book, but I I did see a video about Jim Morrison. Um, uh, I didn't make the connection to who that was that was uh, talking about that, but uh, talking about who Jim Morrison's dad was and the connection with uh, uh, Satanism and things like that. Um, uh, I'm fascinated by what you've uh, found, Angel, and I'm, I'm definitely, when you post those links uh, in the description, I'm going to uh, follow up on that. Uh, I'll get some um, good links together for videos, too. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, I was going to say uh, about demon possession, when you look at Bundy's eyes, Ted Bundy, um, he looks possessed to me. In, in certain interviews that I've seen him in. Um, so you're not the angel. You're not saying I'm just clarifying. Uh, you're not saying that these murders didn't happen. You're saying, no, no, no. I'm saying that, that, that and I'm even saying in a lot of cases, the, the people that they, they say did it uh, actually did do it. I do think Dahmer absolutely uh, committed murders um, uh, and did all these things, but it was in, he, he was connected to a larger group of right. uh, even a, gay serial killers and it was all, it was a cult related um and a lot of it is you know the the, the there if, if, it's so hard there's so much evidence it's so extensive like for instance Dahmer's dad was a was an astronaut where he worked for nasa um mm. he uh visited Dahmer visited the white house on a field trip um uh, when he was in grade school and um he impressed a bunch of kids by basically being able to go chat up the uh the vice president in the oval office and he, he had all these connections. They yeah. all have all these, most of them have a lot of connections. Bundy, of course, he um, uh, uh, had, uh, he was, I, I think his mother, Mary, yeah, uh, politics, yeah. Uh, John Wayne Gacy, um, he was uh, really high up in like like the Republican Party, as was Bundy. Um, mm -hmm. I, I believe they were both in, involved in the Republican Party, which this was all going on at the time of the, the Franklin scandal too, which was, you know, which traced all the way back to the uh, first Bush uh, White House where, um, you know, uh, they were pretty much caught red handed having boy prostitutes uh, taken in mm. uh, for nighttime tours of the White House and the Franklin scandal, which is, you know, a huge child trafficking thing. It was awful. If you look that mm. look that up, it's not just the Democrats. It's, uh, it's absolutely the Republicans, too, that yeah. are involved in this. The Franklin scandal it was like the, that was the OG Pizzagate. And um, mm. it was uh, really, really gross and really awful. And it was boys little boys and um they, they have to, you know the, one of the victims was awarded like a million dollars in damages because the court uh, uh you know help acknowledge that what he was saying was provably true and he was you know he i mean the names he rattled off you know made people's heads spin a lot of them are you know still involved in politics today uh, nothing ever really came of it for them um but um but yeah no i they, uh, you know these murders happened um, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I'm, I can't even think offhand of one. I think where, oh no, there, nobody really died. I'm not saying that. And I do think that these guys that they pinned on, they pinned the murders on for the most part, yes, they were involved. They were not acting alone in a lot of cases. Right. And even mm -hmm. if they acted alone, they weren't acting alone, uh, in the terms of like, they were just some wild lone wolf serial killer. They were, they were operating under orders. They were involved in trafficking rings. They were involved in satanic mm -hmm. uh, cults and, um, and this, the, the evidence for it is staggering. I, I, I took notes, but I, I, I would be here forever explaining all of it. Um, um, did, he but did, for, huh? did he do anything with the, the uh, Sharon Tate murders? Uh, hmm. I believe I believe he did. I think that might have been the, the weird scenes um, uh, inside the canyon. But uh, he definitely talked about Manson. Um, there's some interviews with Dave McGowan uh, talking about the, the Manson murders. And yes, that was... Um, there's a lot of weird stuff about Sharon Tate. I mean, there's also a good chance that uh, there's a lot of evidence that she's not actually dead um, and that her quote unquote sister is really her. 
uh, which we've seen before with um, uh, in, in other uh, high profile murders um, mm-hmm. where it appears that the people are not actually dead. And so it was kind of like a big dog and pony show. But Manson was um, he was at the he was at the boys school. What was it called? The um, Boys Town. He was a Boys Town yeah. victim. And mm-hmm. um, Boys Town was linked in with the Franklin scandal. <laughs> so they were getting boys from Boys Town. And um, uh, it's all linked together. It's like this big incestuous, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, ring of, of people that, um, uh, especially when you go back to the 90s, the 80s, and the 70s, um, it, it all ties together. And there's just so much evidence. And even in the high profile true crime books, you know, they don't go over this. Because I read all of those when I was when I was growing up, and um, I had no idea how much evidence was just totally left out. Because you know these people are that that write the the big you know best selling true crime novels. They're they're approved. They are they, you know they they don't say anything that's going to implicate you know and give away the game. But um, uh, you, if you you know I, I, one thing that's weird that I'll say um, I have connections to two of these serial killers, like Son of Sam. Um, my friend Jay Lynn, who I've mentioned before, you know, she's my best friend that her family was, you know, they're Luciferians and all of that. And they subjected her to all of this mind control stuff um, when we were kids. And um, uh, she was dating while she was living here with me. Her boyfriend who was staying here, he was, uh, uh, his godfather was the, the David Berkowitz's prison shrink, you mm-hmm. know, and, and which there's a lot of weird stuff with that because her boyfriend was, uh, also a victim like they all these pe- these victims right these kids um right. that are born to these families they get linked up and assigned relationships to kind of mind each other so yeah. um but so i you know I, i'm suspicious of the shrink too because uh he was quote unquote godfather i wonder if that means programmer but he did uh he did say that uh he does david berkowitz has you know repeatedly stated that he did not act alone that these were part of a, of a, of a the, the, the process church of the final judgment. This is something mm-hmm. that's a rabbit hole. I'll talk about maybe next week, the process church, of the final judgment. This is a very big, a big thing. They're like a, a, a satanic like syndicate that um, is responsible for all kinds of, of different crazy things. And you'll find them, you know, you know popping up in, in all kinds of like, you know, weird, uh, you know, tie-ins like with the, the, the West Memphis three and Damien Ethel's. It's so hard to go into all of it, but um, mm. um, then also Dean, Dean Coral, which some people might have heard of. He was the Galveston uh, Candyman, uh, Candyman killer from um, uh, Galveston, Texas, and he killed upwards of like some 20 boys, and he tortured them in really gruesome ways, and they eventually mm. found a lot of the bodies in a mass grave on, on Galveston Beach. Well, here's the weird thing. Um, my mother, see, the Dean Coral event, he had two accomplices. They were teenage boys. They were in high school and that he would, he basically paid them, bought them really like nice things, like a fancy cars and stuff to get the hip. They would lure boys to him. And um, one of them, and eventually one of them shot him uh, and killed him. Um, he, he was, his name was Elmer Wayne. One Hemmer. of the boys? Yeah. One, well, one of the, the accomplices, the teenage boys that were oh, helping okay. get little boys. My okay. mother was date. My mother was dating him at the time. My mother was dating Elmer Wayne Henley in, in, in high school when this wow. was going on, and um, and uh, she, you know, she even saw him get the new car, and she had like a bunch of little brothers. So when she found out, like it really horrified her because they were exactly like the, the the profile that uh, of the of the other victims. But um, mm-hmm. and so who knows if that's why he was dating her. Um, probably not. My mom was really pretty, <laughs> but, um, but that, you know, it's still really creepy because she had a whole bunch of little brothers that age. And, um, anyway, uh, uh, which I just, it's just totally weird to me to this day, but he's another one who has military ties. He was in the military and it's mm-hmm. almost certain that he was involved in child trafficking. And so he wasn't just, just, you know, for no reason, just, you know, going out and procuring all these boys, just like Gacy. Um, and, um, uh, let's see. Did I cover everything else? Um, it's. Uh, I'll have to go into it more on another show because there's a lot, mm-hmm. and I, I, there's some interesting things that I could read off to you guys that would really drive it home. But definitely, this was in part to cover up satanic ritual abuse, and they they ended up nope. coming out with a satanic panic to make mm-hmm. to gaslight us some more. Mm-hmm. And um, 
because we had these serial killers, you know, they have a long established trend of so-called serial killers, you know, uh, basically anytime something weird like that happened, oh, no, no, that was just a lone wolf serial killer. Um, and uh, the, the fact is, is that that's not true. I mean, there's, there's some, there are some, obviously, I'm, I'm sure that there's, you know, a good handful of, of these serial killers we know of that were acting alone mostly. But uh, for the most part, these people are, are tied together. And um, that's because there is an actual like underground that yep. has mm-hmm. there's huge demand for for, for uh, torture, rape and murder, especially mm-hmm. of children. And, um, that, and that's that's what this, this is. And that's how they cover up this industry, this industry, because, you know, obviously it's going to rear its ugly head. We're going to catch wind of it. If they're yep. really at an industrial level doing this to people in our country, yep. but uh, they came up with this whole serial killer thing to 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 cover for it if it ever you know surfaced basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's that, and so a lot of the people that, that we would come to know as like this horrible serial killer with all these bodies under his belt, he was kind of the patsy. He was the guy that was involved that was picked mm-hmm. to be the face of the crime um, when these crimes could not be sufficiently covered up to where we never even heard about them so yeah the real quick the reason i asked about manson is because he said a lot of weird things and and the right. thing he said you just think oh he's on acid i mean it's just he's just done too much acid dude's crazy mm-hmm. but but when you look at it from the what you're saying angel the way that you're explaining this um some of the stuff that he said he's he almost came out and said i'm killing because you know, they want me to kill. Yes. I think he did say that. Oh, wow. I need to go back and listen to his interviews because you're right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. He said he could have anyone from inside if he wanted. He could have your head in a basket. He told told one newscaster that was interviewing him. Hey, oh, wow. he, he said it like he believed it. You know, like wow. he, he, he said, if I wanted you dead, you'd be dead. You know? Yeah, Ama- amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I recommend a lot of people go back and listen to Manson's interviews and just keep this in mind and see if maybe he doesn't start making sense. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do that as soon as we're done here. Yeah. <laughs> well, please Sister follow Angel's going to go do that as soon as we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, Jason? Follow up on the links for me because uh, I know more about the sex trafficking than I do the, the uh, I mean, I've, I've read, I was interested, fascinated with the serial killer thing uh, when I was younger. Um, I read all the Manson books and things like that, and, and Richard Speck, and, uh, or, uh, no, not Richard Speck, what was his name? Anyway, Richard I'm, Speck was one of them. Yeah, so he killed the nurses in Chicago, I believe. Yes. Um, so uh, I know a little bit about that. I didn't know the angle you, that you're coming from, but the child sex trafficking and the satanic um, ritual abuse, um, there, there's a video out there of someone that went through that uh, uh, that's, that's very, it's hard to get through. Uh, but once once you get through it, you realize that this this exists. This is not... This is not some cooked up conspiracy thing. This is what they're doing to the children. They're they're uh, kidnapping children in a lot of a lot of cases. The state parks are a dangerous place, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. People disappear from there and they're never found again. And the, the, they blame the, Bigfoot. Yeah, the network of people that are doing this. So it makes total sense. And when you said, uh, Angel, one of the things that was compelling when you said they moved to the false flags of school shootings. Right. And I thought, yeah, when have I heard about a serial killer? Mm. If, if that's true, they don't just stop wow. if, if, if it's in people. Good so they've point. moved to, to cause fear uh, in the, with the school shootings. Yep, mm. different yeah, agenda, slightly different. Well, flags. Yep. Well, yeah, now terrorism. all of a sudden there's, there's no serial killers in the world. Right. They're all just stopped. Right. They're like, oh, we're done. <laughs> that went out of style, guys. Now, yeah. now the cool kids are, are shooting up cool the kids school. Are shooting <laughs> up schools. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a totally different psychology from what we're told. I mean, for, you know, going to Well, they to picked school, up guns first... and they enter schools now is, is the new serial killer. No, but see, even back then they had mass shooters. And we were taught in, you know, a, a forensic psychology school. Not, I mean, that's all it's called. But, and, you know, by, by, in most courses, we were taught that the, the psychology, the profile, totally different, totally different needs being fulfilled, you know, totally mm-hmm. different profile. So you wouldn't there it wouldn't be that the serial killer the serial killers turned into school shooters now that they satisfy different urges. So there should still be 
this yeah. this group of people that need to, to satisfy their urges uh by serial killing it's a different yeah. thing it's like an addiction and and it's like a you know supposedly we've been told this whole mythology about it where a lot of us watch criminal minds and we think we are profilers you know we think yeah. oh i know i get let me at it coppers i got this uh, and 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 um and it's just bs it's silly it's actually really silly at when you when you actually look at it with fresh eyes and think mm-hmm. you know with this kind of information in mind you realize like ah oh, it's such a dummy yeah like this is all it was all just mumbo jumbo and a right. lot of freudian crap and um uh, uh you know uh this but they wanted us to just detect they, they want us to think that there's you know normally we would think uh that there would be a reason why all of these things these crimes are so similar there's a pattern here maybe there's a you know maybe there's actually a group at work you know, but that's the last thing they want us to think. And it also serves a purpose, like I said, of making us terrified of just each other. Because, like I said, right. the serial killers or are just always... fear in general. If they, even right. if they don't make us afraid of each other, the demons feed on fear. Yeah. Right, right. But think how many times they would interview the neighbor, and the neighbor would tell you what a nice guy Gacy was. Right, the last right, person right, you right. would suspect. They drove that mm-hmm. home to where it was just tired and played out to even hear that. Because they wanted us to think that um, uh, the boy like next have door, the social be afraid of them. Yes. The social distancing, the, you know, before social distancing, that's what it and achieved. Right. It, I mean, before they named it, yeah. Summer, mm-hmm. summer of Sam, they had uh, you know like blackouts and stuff, and people were terrified during that period. They were they were striking fear. And the other thing you said too that I found compelling was talking about the media and the way they were represented. Uh, came up with names for these people like Richard Maria, yep. Night Stalker, the Zodiac Killer, um, even Bundy. You know, like his type was brunettes with certain hairstyle, and that's the way people wore their hair back then. And how many brunettes compared to blondes are there? So, right. and, and they would like, give you details about killings that they shouldn't do, so they they won't get any so called copycats and stuff like that. Yeah, right. They shouldn't have told us like anything. We didn't need to know. You didn't right. even know how this girl was sexually tortured. Like they tell you, like really great, like awful right. details, and that right. would have been something that you you would have like only the killer would have ever known, aside from mm-hmm. the investigators. And also, you know, you're inspiring copycats. You're they're telling us it's a contagion, but that was the explanation mm-hmm. for why it, there were no serial killers. And then suddenly, there's all kinds. So it's a, it's a contagion. So then, why are you making rock stars of them? You know, yeah. why are you, that, which they did. I mean, you know, how many women proposed to, to, to these guys? I mean, Richard Ramirez, oh. he was like a sex symbol, you know, to, to women. It's ridiculous. So yeah, uh, a really fascinating subject though. Um, and it's a, uh, it's, it's a paradigm uh, 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 shifter sure. when you, yeah. when you realize it. And if you have any information, if you know about like the, the child trafficking stuff, Jason, then all of this stuff will click right into place when you start looking at uh, some of these videos and stuff. It'll just, it, it'll help a lot that you already are familiar with all that because you'll see it right away. It's, it's, it's awesome. Once, the, once things start to make sense after you've been gaslit your whole life, where yeah, nothing no makes wow. sense. No doubt. <laughs> uh, this you, is a, this, yes, because this is an angle. That I never considered when once I realized now I again I do not disbelieve that there are serial killers and that Sister Angel is tying, you know, tying some things in together here, connecting the dots where she was saying that some of these maybe they were just characters or maybe they were actually bad actors involved and they made them the scapegoat or whatever it was that they're connected as a, a so-called front man or cover up for larger crimes that are being committed by groups of people. It's a, I had never heard that perspective before. That's very interesting. And I yep. think you covered it very, very well, Sister Angel, in a very short period of time. Maybe the next time, if we do cover it, we'll start it in the beginning of the evening uh, before it gets t- uh, too late for people. Um, because I think it, it shied some yeah. people away to discuss something at, at this time of the hour. But um, Yeah, yeah. That, that's a better idea. Uh, I could get some uh, quotes and stuff lined up. That, we'll, re- uh, we'll revisit it again in the future. I'm not, I'm not afraid to uh, to talk about this aspect of it because if we are to a degree being gaslit, people should know about it. And that brings me, uh, Sister Angel, if you finished your your uh, yes. thought on that. Okay, yes. so I'm going to say good night here to Brother Cripps. I'm going to end the broadcast here in just a minute, Brother Cripps, if you do want to hang on. Um 
D next week, uh, brother Ben, his voice should be much better by then. His throat should be healed up. We believe God. And, uh, we're going to put him on the hot seat next week where he's going to talk about QAnon. Uh, he has promised us he has some really good things to say about that next week. Um, also, we can continue the discussion I said about marine spirits next yes. week. Yes. And I'm also, really uh, Brother Ben wanted to talk about evolution next week, as well as... Um, I think because it got mentioned a couple of times tonight, gaslighting. Now, there was a movie that was done. Oh, gosh, I just watched it and I don't remember what year it was done. Uh, about It was actually called Gaslight, if I remember correctly. Yes. I, uh, yeah, Gaslight, right? Yeah. yeah yes, it was, it was um, black and white, but it's a very well done movie. Let's see, 19, I think I want to make sure I have the right one, 1944. Yes, that's the one I saw. I just recently saw it again with uh, Charles Boyer. Um, now, I'm not picking Brother Cripp's movie for next week. What I'm talking about is if you want to go see a film that deals with this, and I think it does it uh, very well about this gentleman who is, if you want to call him that, trying to make his wife look like she's crazy. Oh yeah, and and, could, and yeah, it's with um, let's see, it's Charles Boyer, uh, Boyer, Ingrid Bergman, Joseph Cotton, mm -hmm. and May Whitney, and then it says years after her aunt was murdered in her home, a young woman moves back into the house with her new husband. However, he has a secret that he will do anything to protect, even if it means driving his wife insane. And see, this is what gaslighting is about. It's really about playing with people's minds, manipulating them emotionally. Yep. Yep. And so I want to cover that as a topic next week. But right. we have reached that point in the evening where I'm going to let our guests say good night to the people in the chat and the, our listening audience. Awesome. Brother Cripps, why don't you go ahead and say good evening? Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> um, I, I enjoyed it uh, as always, and I hope everyone has a great weekend. Um, I appreciate uh, Sister Lisa giving us uh, time to talk about these uh, topics. And um, there's so many things that are interesting. I appreciate everyone that's uh, still hanging in there. Been been here uh, most mostly the whole time. Uh, so that's awesome. So uh, you guys uh, have a good weekend. And um, I look forward to next week. And uh, thank you, uh, Angel and Lisa. And thank you, Ben, for sticking around and producing for us again, even though you don't feel well. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, uh, already people are interested to hear uh, uh, Joyce is asking gaslighting. Who doesn't know what gaslighting is? And I'll just say one more thing. There is a rash right now, an upswing of narcissists in this uh, country. And narcissists use, uh, that's what they call the gaslighting. Um, now, narcissists aren't a new thing. It's just it's newly identified that mm -hmm. people for years have been in these bad relationships and just, just thinking, well, I just got a bad one. Well, there's a lot of bad ones out there. And narcissism itself, I believe, is a byproduct of, of sin. And without God, this is what happens to people. They are self-focused and they follow certain patterns that can be recognized if you look at them certain ways of behavior and that that could be a topic i might we're going to talk about gaslighting i mean not just the movie but the idea of mm -hmm. gaslighting we could add to that uh narcissism in the world uh today and it's going to get worse with all this separation being uh divided and set apart and and uh all that narcissism is going to get even worse if people get more self-focused and concerned about other people being sick around them or not wearing a mask or wearing a mask mm -hmm. or not taking the virus, all that stuff, or not mm -hmm. taking the vaccine. All of it's just going to amp up and amp up as this world continues. The Bible talks about lovers of self, you know, in the mm -hmm. end, lovers of self and um, says several things that uh, uh, the love of many grows cold. Well, it's, cold. it's already starting to, it's already starting to happen. People mm -hmm. are more concerned about their own health than they are 
about, you know, people, uh, businesses and keeping things, uh, keeping their families fed and all that. And more concerned about whether you have a mask on or not, uh, whether you're complying with the suggestions and all that. Um, it, it, it's going to get yes. worse. Did you see the commercials that they're running where they have a, a person lying in bed and they're, the implication in the, the, the video, what they're inferring or implying is that the person who's not wearing their mask caused that person to be laying in the bed. They're wow. running commercials. And another one is if they're not, ha they don't want you putting it under your nose. Okay, so you can breathe. They go. They want people going around finger wagging, going, mm -mm, "That's improper. You must put it up above your nose." Wow. You can't make this up. I have seen. They're already running commercials with this out here in California. One, one last thing about the mask thing, uh, and I'm sure you're aware of this, uh, Lisa. But for mm -hmm. thousands of years in the past, they had slaves wear masks because it represented them not having a voice. That's what wow. it meant. They represent. They had no voice. They were property. Really? Yes. Oh my goodness. So they want to put have us wear masks because we don't have a voice anymore. The voice is the government, the people in leadership. We listen to what they say. Science, doctors, what they say, we do. That's what they want. And what they've realized in this whole uh, pandemic is that yes vast majority of people seem to believe it. I mean, I've heard people say, well, no, most people I talk to don't believe it. Yeah, well, look look at what, what's going on in the news. Yeah, there are a lot of people that say they don't believe it, but I see people every day, and now there's an upswing in people wearing masks and everything. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. they're, they're ignoring the reality and ignoring the evidence of what we see. I don't know a single person. I don't either. That has the virus, and people say, "Well, I know someone, a friend of a friend, whose dad died. His grandpa was had, you know, dude. If this if this was a real thing, if this right. was going on, you would mm -hmm. see people on your left and on your right getting sick. That's right. In the hospital. That's right. You ought to be named, have, you ought to be able to name eight or ten people that were sick. That's a. I have plenty of people that had the flu. That like my hairdresser today, her sister, she said had COVID. She worked in a nursing home. But I said, so what did she have? What had happened? Like what? Oh, it was like a really bad. It was like she had body aches, really bad, really bad flu. Mm -hmm. But she didn't go to the hospital. And I was like, so it, like I said, so like if the test is bogus, and I told her about like the Tanzanian, you know, but Maga Foley, the president, you know, his, his like little test he did on the tests. Um, and I said, if the test is bogus and she was in a nursing home working and told she was likely going to get sick, they were making her wear all of this PPE where she was basically suffocating all day under lots of stress. Um, and I said, and, and what she, the test is bogus. So let's just roll it. Like the fact that she tests positive for it means nothing. Because jackfruit and goats test positive for it too. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just roll, throw that out. She had the flu though. That's what happened. She had the flu. In, like that's what you would describe it as. She goes, Yeah, that's that's it. I said, So I mean I said, so it's still there's still no way to verify that there's really a thing going around mm -hmm. aside from and it's not even going around because like that's still the only person I've met that even knows somebody that got it was her sister, you know. And she was working in a nursing home where she was told every day that she was being the like primary, you know, risk. Uh, a group that that's going to get it somebody in a nursing home she was working but still she and she was wearing so much stuff that there's no way she would have had it transmitted to her mm -hmm. right and i said you know the way stress manifests in the body if it's going to make you sick it's going to give you a flu-like illness that's that's proven scientifically so well sister angel let me stop you there i absolutely am agreeing with you about what you're saying mm -hmm. here uh, but I do know one thing that I have seen verifiable that I do know other people that uh, did have this happen, which is loved ones who were sick with other ailments that were never sick with the flu or cold symptoms when they sadly passed away, have their death certificates marked, for example, someone that had cancer and had been sick with cancer for more than 10 years, their death certificate was marked COVID-19, mm -hmm. not that they died from cancer or complications from the treatment from cancer. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. I do know those stories. I know. That's what she someone, said too. 
Right. The people in the so, nursing I mean, home. We like guys, we could go on about this forever. Yeah. But Sister Angel, we're gonna say good morning because we're gonna yes. let Brother Cripps go. Yes. Uh, S Sister Angel, say good morning to everybody. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, still raining here. Um, I uh, I had a really great time and uh, letting that you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do some prep work for next week. I gotta really buckle down. But I think gaslighting is a good subject to discuss. I was actually thinking of making that my topic of discussion tonight. Um, uh, but uh, uh, now that I see that there's some interest in it, maybe that's what we'll, we'll uh, talk about. Because I think it's very important because it's happening everywhere. And just what Jason said about the slave masks, uh, I think mm -hmm. the fact mm -hmm. that we're being forced to wear these masks and they've made sure to, to put a lot of evidence out there, like a lot of voices in the media telling us like that the masks are useless. I mean, they were even telling us that from the beginning and that that's mm -hmm. why we shouldn't hoard them because they wouldn't mm -hmm. do anything. But then to know that you're still forced to wear them, um, this is, it's kind of like, I don't know if the word, it's not emasculation. It's like disempowerment, right? So when mm -hmm. you're, if you actually comply with it, um, it breaks you in a way. It breaks you to, to, to do so, especially if you're dutifully wearing a mask all the time, even in the car, mm -hmm. even though most people I know that are wearing masks, when I talk to them, they don't believe the masks are necessary. And they don't even know if they believe there's a pandemic yet. They're still wearing this suffocating device on their face that is humiliating and uncomfortable. And I, I think it tells us that they're about to do something. Some, they want, there's something going on where it's really important now for them to somehow to, to, to silence us, disempower us, and, um, and, and kind of prepare us to not, um, not resist. And I personally, I don't think that's going to be a forced vaccination, but it could be a, a voluntary one. Uh, that could be a really good way to prep people to uh, voluntarily take a vaccine that they don't necessarily want. Um, but I, but I, I personally don't think they're going to force vaccinations on people. I have my reasons for that. But yeah, so really great point you made there, Jason. And um, I uh, I guess we'll have a lot to discuss next week. Um, uh, yes, you know, I don't think this will die down by then, unfortunately. Yes, uh, sadly, I don't <laughs> either, sister. Right. But uh, like I said, I saw this mess coming because I wasn't looking at it believe in anything they said and i'm not saying this because i think i'm smart nope nope i get the holy spirit all the credit because i was looking at it with spiritualized and discernment and i've been watching how they operate and when i say they we're talking about the children of darkness whomever that parses out to be i can't name names i can't tell you who's on the list but i do know that uh, they lie and which and part of their witchcraft is lying. And if they can get you to believe the lie, the spell is cast. And Just go back note, to our live stream that, that we did on that on, in like January uh, about um, how HIV was the blueprint to understand not equal this whole AIDS. thing. Yes, exactly. Yes. HIV does not equal AIDS. That's that's the we were talking about all this stuff before anybody was really prophetic. Uh, oh, it was yeah. prophetic what we said in that broadcast. If you guys haven't heard it, you need to hear it. It was yeah. excellent. It, it was took forever to hear anybody else back us up. Remember, I mean, it was frustrating yes. at first. We were out but there on our own. It was like it was like uh, like John, a voice crying in the wilderness. And then it started clicking, and we started seeing all these things coming out, passing. And, and Sister Angel and I were like, "Oh my goodness, we nailed it with that broadcast." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's and to uh, God anyway, be the glory because a lot is, of people God. saw the correlations from right. that broadcast, and that's what, what got us here today. With uh, and I'm sure a lot of people testimony. naturally distrust all of these things that come out. I'm not saying that any, like, oh yeah, all of you guys thought it was real because a lot of people think you don't trust anything the media says anymore. But um, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, I try not to do that. I try so I don't be an auto hoaxer because then people don't listen to you because you say everything's mm -hmm. fake all the time. So, um, mm -hmm. but I knew that that H I I knew that viruses were in question, and I also knew that um, that that they ran this HIV scam. That I knew that they could run and fake an entire pandemic. It would not be hard at all. They've already done it. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been especially doing it when you when you heard them saying the science and what they were describing is not how viruses work. Right, <laughs> right, and they, they totally threw that out the window. The, the principles of virology, right. they're, they're, they're gone. They, the viruses don't even have to cause the same symptoms in people, not even close. They don't even have to cause any oh. symptoms. We would never yes. have been able to, quote, unquote, prove that germs cause it, like this germ causes this illness 
if we were operating by these uh, standards, because right. um, if, if, if a germ supposedly can be uh, super, uh, in, you know, deadly in uh, uh, some people, but then cause no symptoms in another, we would never be able to identify that this germ causes this illness. And, and I'm saying that's in question anyway, but by their logic, uh, it's impossible that they could have ever proven germ theory if germs can behave the way they're saying COVID does, yeah. it would be, you would if, never know. If we ran with the science that they're using right now, because it doesn't make sense. And it's in co direct contradiction, contradiction to the way they told us viruses work to begin with. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, on that note, we've reached the end of our broadcast. Please join us next week. I mentioned what topics we're going to pick up with next week. I thank all of you who made it this far. Uh, you're amazing. We have 13 people left tonight that hung in there to the very end of the broadcast. And you are now officially night out. You made mm -hmm. it all the way to the end. Thank you so very much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you next week. Same time right here on this channel, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on late night with Lisa and friends. Be blessed, beloved of the most high God. In the mighty name of King Jesus, amen. Amen. Okay. Ben? Ben, are you there? I might have heard him unmuting. Hopefully he's, maybe he went to sleep. Let's see if it's, did you put uh, stop? Are you able to? Yeah, I just ended the stream because I think